dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time uh we are playing a bit of Ghosts of Salt Marsh. Um, the party is close on the heels of a group called the Thalassic League that seems to have entered in a pledge with one of Salt Marsh's leaders. And because this pledge, the promise of the pledge has lapsed, they seem hell bent on dragging Salt Marsh all the way down to the depths. Now, the party just defeated um, part of a cult, some of a bit that... Um, that was helping the Thalassic League that seemed to be a core part. They were able to rescue a child who was about to be sacrificed and sort of uncover some type of um, secret island that was a meeting place. Um, but there they discovered that they um, would need a few more items before they're able to journey further into this um, sort of sunken respite. Uh, they also accomplished a task that a wizard named Keledek set them out to where they needed to capture the living head octopus combination of a Kraken priest, one of the entities that seems to emerge from the deep in order to administer to this cult and this Thalassic League. It's pretty dead. Did it have to be living? Nope. I say that every time and he yeah. never said that. It, Near okay. it just needs to be freshly dead. Freshly okay. dead. Not disintegrated yeah. or burned or smashed yeah. to smithereens or anything Zapped like that. Zapped him so. with lightning. He's gone. Yeah. Um, no, we recovered the body. Sir Ryan went little, and climbed up a rock yeah, for it. Cooked. He, he did. It's smelling a little like calamari, but it's still, um, you know, intact. The duck is so, really um, delicious, guys. Get some. Sorry. It is. I feel bad that it's so sentient, but I had a great <laughs> octopus leg the other day. But anyway, um, so <laughs> we, um, we <laughs> will resume there, my friends, um, as you guys are making your way back to the city of Salt Marsh with this um, dead Kraken priest in your possession um, after the storm was called um, and then amplified by your cleric um it has now since dissipated so um everything seems to be, have um uh, calmed down a bit um i should say while we are uh before we get fully going i want to give a little shout out thank you all for the level four hype train that was incredible um uh, a little if i can uh, yeah, what's uh, up? I've got I've got totals for us for that. I, I believe I out. do. Yeah, go ahead. You do it. Go ahead. Oh, okay, great. Um, so Pat draws. Thank you for the 500 bits and the 10 gifted subs. Um, Pingu, that's me and uh, Duskbound Dwarf. Thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, same with Manx Works. Thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, thank you, Anonymous, for five gifted subs and Max Slacker for 400 bits. Uh, we hit level four, so that's going to be a what is that 20. $25, $25 store credit yeah. we will be giving a out along with our 15 one that we do regularly. So there are 40... bits as well. So that's uh, what, yeah. four, 46s or two, whatever you want to do it. Um, you know, with all the gifts, let's start out. All of you take D20 inspiration to begin the session. <gasps> what a nice guy. Oh my God. I uh, so never say I am not benevolent 
Uh, and if we already have D20 inspiration, what do we do? You just Ooh. suck it. <laughs> you just get to Take have it. Take a D6 question? Take a drink. <laughs> Take a, a break. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. If you already have D20, uh, go ahead and... Um, take the d6 so there's probably lots of <laughs> there's lots of inspiration passed around so very mm. good thank you to our generous viewers um i will now adjust the encounters accordingly no no, um, no, no. <laughs> uh, just to let people know as well no, that no, that no. resets in an hour we potentially have four of those a night and we could potentially give away even loads more so with uh thanks to you guys so thank you very much so, so yeah, On a ahead. practical note, DM, and, and sort of for the group, since it has been a little bit of a while, um, I believe that we are heading back to Salt Marsh with the purpose of just doing a little stop off to deliver That's our correct. octopus, reload the ship, and then we were going to go chase some of those other clues that we have because yeah. we didn't want yes. to pay the crew again. <laughs> yeah, because right. we'd be paying out of pocket <laughs> rather than... Right, out of profit. Yep. Yep. There you go. That's the phrase. <laughs> Also, we found a an underwater door, right? Am yeah, I, that's what that we correctly? need the paperweights for. Right. Was four it, paperweights to open the door. Four paperweights. Yep. <laughs> those, yeah, they're paperweights. those classic There's no other. Uh, locked by progress doors. Yeah. <laughs> no way there to click are, them through uh, the wall. And you have, yeah. you have one of them. Or, yeah, your, your, or Keladek um, has it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holodeck, yeah. <laughs> Ro Rolodex? Every time, every time we say his name, I just think holodeck. It's... Oh that God. makes sense. Um, At the very end of the last session, computer um, Mariah, uh, <laughs> Mariah gave our um, teenage, um, not prisoner, I guess, our Ward? teenage passenger, uh, the bad news that her family were a bunch of fish people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she yeah. did it very well and tactfully, and it seems to have not scarred her overly well, more, overly much. We also oh, yeah. found out that she had a necklace that could summon a kraken. Yeah. If yes. put in water. Right? Yes. If, if, if you it dropped it into contact. the open ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that was when we had the idea to get a whole bunch of <laughs> glyphs right. of warding. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Drop well, it down and as a depth charge. She talked about that as she was raised, she was told when you go on your first true voyage on your 18th birthday, it's um, customary to toss this trinket into the sea as a token of good luck. And while that may have been true for some, um, it would not have been true for her, as it seems the deal between this um, cult and the Prime Water family meant that while he would sacrifice one ship every um, 25 years, he had not had an, uh, nearly any losses to natural disasters or anything like that on the sea um besides mm -hmm. that one every 25 years so it's they worked um, out pretty well for had him previously been chalked up to remarkably good seamanship on behalf of the uh prime water family but now it's obvious mm -hmm. there's something darker afoot we also have a baby that is two percent fish is that yeah. is that just, the correct precise percentage <laughs> Exactly two. Uh, yes. Sorry, I, only, I only eat skim, baby. I don't do two percent. Uh, oh. Good for him. I'm sure Melvin would like to ritually cast ancestry.com. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, hashtag not a sponsor. Um, oh my god! But if you're interested, the... yeah. If you're watching ancestry.com, that'd be the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, yeah. uh, no. You'd have to be like, guess our character's lineage. Yeah, I like it. You know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, D and D DNA. Okay. Sorry. Um, so it, it, my Let reason for bringing up the necklace was: did we give that back to her, or did we keep it? No, she didn't I... want it. Mariah yeah, that's a good. Uh, that um, and I in the was gonna give it back to her. And then I think there was some confusion about that. So, Peter, can you clarify? If I offered it to her, which did you did, she accept she, it back? she didn't want to accept a new lot. Yeah, she just turned away thing. from it. She didn't. Yeah. Okay. She didn't then, seem to care about any of the things in that box that she had. Okay. Which one was a, then, then a Marlin Spike? A, um, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. 
we'll lock that into the sea chest then in the captain's quarters. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Cool. I actually remember it. I feel so proud. How long? So it won't take us very long to get back. Um, nope. No. Probably that same day. Definitely the same day. And the plan is just to keep the crew on the ship and get everyone the various things that they are supposed to get. Yep. So, mm -hmm. Sarayan, Octopus delivery. What are we going right. to do with our prisoner? Was Kaylin our prisoner? No, oh, we have her dad. Yeah. Fish daddy. Oh, her creepy dad. Fish, fish we, daddy. We had considered handing him over to Keladek. Oh, yes, we did. I think that's why. What would the benefit be in that? Well, he is us not being in charge both of Both a member of a powerful family or a well-known family in Salt Marsh and a perversion of some sort of sea cult, sea god. So we'd be turning him over for study. Yeah, pro oh, probably. Keladek. Oh, Keladek's no, the wizard. Confused. Well, no, I Kaledek. understand that Keladek is the wizard, but what use would a wizard have for the sea man except to study him? Well, he we could also we could? most likely be able to keep him safe and controlled rather than... We could like, also inquire things. as to whether there's a way to reverse the process. That was my thinking. And ask Keladek whether he might be able to investigate that with regards to fish daddy yeah just tell me where to carry him when we get there okay it's probably I... more a job for the priest carrying him <laughs> no turn, turning him back you have to carry the. Mm. Uh, i don't know i damn i have a question uh, just write it down <laughs> Um, where would we dock the ship if we weren't keen on making a big deal of our presence? Hmm. Um, does it, are you trying to avoid contact altogether, or? I just feel like we don't have, like, well... I don't know. I feel like it would be a little weird to be traipsing across town with a fishman and an octopus. Well, we we could we could do that on with with a floating book and put like a tarp over him so people can't see him. Okay. Just if you prefer. That's fair. Uh, you are muted, Shaun. Muti muti. Not oh. muted. Oh, no, we did not hear solves. what you said. Magic oh. solves all problems. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Well, we'll just head to port then. To port? Okay. Handbrake hand um, it in. A handbreak it in Mark again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a uh, full crew and everything this time so it's not uh, so much of an issue but yes uh, you bring the ship into port uh, I believe you've usually been docking at the Oland house um, at the okay. Oland dock um, so as you uh, pull the ship along there uh, some of the dock hands uh, um, pull help pull in and pull the boat to the side and you do see there standing sort of at the end of the dock um after a moment or two the um golden haired and bright face of anders solmore and behind him the thin dour calculating guise of scarin wave chaser both apparently waiting here for you and looking towards you and wanting to speak to you so much for not drawing a crown. Hello! Someone else take care of the octopus and the fish, man. Okay. Got it. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. I uh, speak with them and uh, drag. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Neither. Do you want to come with me? Uh, Debbie, do you want to come with me, or do you want to just stay here? Come with you. Okay. Great. Um, uh, you see. Anders kind of raised 
I, I'd like to to speak to you all for a moment, if I could. Um, oh, this okay. probably well, we concerns most of you. So, yeah. yeah we're, we're if you democracy. don't mind. No, we're we're a democracy. So. Yeah, what she said. What's up? We're, we're not How can we help you? I'll, I'll, stay, don't, don't we're let not me know. Intending to stay in town very long. That's fine. Um, but uh, you want to. Uh, walk and talk while your crew kind of does their things. All right. Could we talk here? A private conversation. We don't want to leave. Yeah, him. something like that. You know, just just between old friends. Sure, old friends. Anders. Let's do that. We'll just Great. come back for the taco. <laughs> oh, okay. Is the taco covered? You think it's still in the hold? <laughs> I don't really oh, know what you guys are talking about. I don't know That's... what a taco is. Taco <laughs> Tuesday. That's what oh, it is. Doesn't surprise me. It's fine. Uh, it's so Friday though. We'll we'll walk My and mistake. talk. Stir Friday. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Um. First of all, wow, guys, I've heard some really great things about what you've been doing, but not all of what. Where exactly have you been? What's been, um, what's been going on? It's kind of just Save you know, the we, baby. We, we <sighs> really, <laughs> we had some things going on, and then you just kind of poofed. And I'd like to know all about it. It was an emergency. Yeah, emergency baby saving mission. I, I think Mariah's trying to start an orphanage. That's not what Mariah, I'm intending. I didn't but... know that. Oh, okay, not the conversation we're having right now. Is this you don't um, seem like you'd be a very maternal person. Are you asking I did hear whether some, why I did hear... why we haven't checked in? Are you are we do you have work for us that you that you need to hire us for? Maybe. There's probably some things you could do, but I just I just get a feeling that you haven't been completely forthcoming about what's going on here with salt marsh and what, what, what you've been investigating and looking into i just haven't heard anything for a while you know i'm sorry to make you feel like this wasn't a reciprocal relationship i mean to be honest it, things have been a little stressful lately if things have kind of slipped off our plate we apologize that's uh, that's profusely. fine i get it you guys are busy you are more than capable and um I'm just the truth of still the grateful to you. So the uh, the our wizard has managed to impress one of the local personalities here. This Kaladek lives in the tower. Oh, just oh, I know people like... are afraid to say his name, but he's very knowledgeable and has uh, some interesting items that he has asked us to procure for him at a reasonable at a well, a reasonable markup. I see. Just trying to keep the crew fed. Gotta do some stuff to bring in cash. I'm also told, and he kind of looks behind him at Skarin, um, that you may have been sort of poking around the uh, the old uh, Chandler estate before in their old shop. Is that true? You sort of been in contact with them? I wasn't there for that. I don't know. We did speak with them, yes. Well, we, we okay. saw them oh. at their shop. Hi. We needed supplies and stuff. Why is that? Yeah, I talked to the dad. Because, well, do you know where they are now? Vacation. <laughs> I think they have some, like, house that <laughs> they go right to. He looks right towards you, Sarayan. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation. I, I think that they have, they have some, like, estate. fancy house that they yeah, go to. Yeah, an estate. You know how it is as a rich person. You have places you go. All right, both of you make a deception check. Who's wait? Who's making the deception <laughs> check? Both of you. you know okay. Who are each and who are lying together in tandem? I mean, it's, it's sort not of totally telling a the lie. truth. Oh, yeah, 
They did. Okay, they did go, go to a chateau. All right. They're all Ew. dead. No, they're on vacation. Okay. Yes, uh, vacation. Tw- tw- they're on a permanent vacation. Okay. Need I, I better section. be cracking dice, guys. <laughs> yeah, I rolled a twenty-two. I'm rolling my cracking dice, and I rolled a sixteen. Okay. So he looks at you, and he kind of looks back to Skarin, who is just regarding all of you with cold, narrow eyes. Anders just shrugs, says, uh, okay, Th- it's never happened before, though. So, I don't know, maybe they duped you, too. They're gone. Why? Um, the house is empty, oh, the shop's empty. You said again. This happened again. What's that about? Did I or say was that? that just a slip of the tongue? I thought he said no, it's no, never no, happened. No, 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 he said it's never oh, happened. Oh, it's never happened. God. I and it won't ever happen check. again because they're on vacation. Yeah, I've heard talk of the, you know, they go off to their place to raise their kids and whatever, but yeah. uh, that, oh, that some of them leave for a me. long time. But, well, well I, to be perfectly honest, in the very short interaction that I had with them, I didn't really like most of them, so I'm not really keen to have further interaction. So we can just probably put a pin in that and yeah they're pretty yeah. rude right mariah yeah yeah you're sure that's it i mean as far as the chandlers are concerned i'm ready to wash my hands they're yeah, just boy, out at sea you hanging heard? out on vacation there's i just scared and i have put together a few things um i don't know what the deal is with that but i mm-hmm. The way they disappeared like that, doesn't doesn't that seem like something s- criminals would do? Or smugglers? Or bandits? Do you have any reason to believe that they're bandits other than that they disappeared? I doesn't that seem like something that a, a, a criminal would do? I said it already. Do you want us to fishy. say that they're criminals? Uh, it do you have any information like about that? Or, do you know, other criminals. Cr- other criminals in town? Or anything like that? He he is my... to be a criminal. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she kind of, he kind of just looks at you with open eyes and says... Oh, really? I didn't you know ref- that. You're Used reformed? Used to be. Used to be. You're... What? I've had a You're... really hard life. Awkward. Awkward are side you, glances. Are you a repentant pirate? And there is wow. too. Smack, smack. Awkward. Um, <laughs> hit her arm. Oh. Stop it. Oh God. Okay. Um, you know what? We can talk all about my repentance when we're not in the middle of a reload. Um, so uh, Serene, I think I hear the the crew calling for us. We should probably go check in on them. Oh, I don't hear I, them. I'm going to grab the, Serena's well, arm and start steering her away. <laughs> Except I'm no, weak, so it probably won't work. Bye, bye, so why are you dragging me by, Anders? Anders? I would love to help you I out with a few a... more things, too, with my pull on the council. The only issue is... Well, Scarin's been acting a little weird, and I'm afraid of losing his vote. Wait. Who? Scarin. Sorry, Isn't not Scarin. That Scarin? Um, <laughs> um, 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 it's not Scarin. He says, yeah. uh, Gellin. Gellin. How deep Gellin does this rabbit hole go? a little weird. Okay. Makes much more sense. Okay. <laughs> we He's about to go right with Manist- He's about to go with Manistrad and Eliander and let the whole of Lord's Alliance run this place. Oh. He's okay. tired. He looked, he's been erratic and. I've heard that someone set fire to his, you know, study. Oh my and God, ooh, that's so horrible. Not uh, not a lot books? used to happen here, you know, and you guys have been, you know, uh, behind a lot of events. So I didn't know if there was anything you learned or you knew. Setting fire to your about own study would definitely be something that someone who was acting strange and erratic would do. That sounds like something criminal. I see. I just think that there are better choices for the town council at the moment than someone so worried and absent-minded. 
Mm. But, well, I guess you're all busy, so well, sorry for detaining you. It's totally fine. I, I'm kind of curious, just, just want to make sure we're on the same page, practically speaking, here. Um, is there anything that we can do for you? Um, you know, if, if you do have concerns, there are things that we could probably look into. Um, but, uh, I mean, we're, I, we're I'm up, to, up to you, my friend. Oh, I'm just... Uh, I'm yeah. really just thinking out loud mostly uh, letting well okay. ambition get ahead of me maybe so well, whatever you, you know, heard do with it what you will it, uh, it makes sense you know if you're concerned about the integrity of one of the members of you know the leading government body uh, it, it's interesting and it makes me think is there a charter or something that would lay out the proper protocol that one might need to follow well, if in case there were some sort of criminal involvement. Well, of course, anything like that. Um, I mean, if it were serious enough, if it posed, you know, great enough a risk to Salt Marsh or the people itself, it would certainly be grounds hmm. for removal. And despite Legally them being... Legally defined serious enough. Well, there's... You see, we're, we're, the charter we're bound by isn't, Yes. it's not a list, it's not a constitution with, you know, little knickknacks that are constantly added to. This is salt marsh. We're a bit freer here, but people act on their heart here. Um, if if they see a threat to their family, their people, their their mm -hmm. way of life, they'll act on it. It's not, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's up to the council by simple vote. There's not, uh, there aren't... Uh, tiny bylaws and formulas that we have to so... follow here. Not like Neverwinter, not like the Nord's, Lord's Alliance. That's uh, okay. way too complicated and corrupt up there. So if what there the were a sort of... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if there was some sort of criminal element or other, you know, vote of no confidence, that would simply be a vote amongst the remainder of the council? Certainly. <laughs> and if something so awful hypo... were to happen. Exactly. In this hypothetical situation that we may or may not be in, who knows, what kind of proof would be needed? Kind of give Talise a bit of a look. <laughs> just, just asking. You know, well, what, what, what might you or the council need to prove this? Because that sounds like what you were really asking us. We could arrange, um, we could arrange for testimony in a, uh, in a zone of truth type situation. Um, I think that's what it's called, right? And Scarin just kind of nods. Or if you have any documents or anything like that, that might, um, point towards that or it's, you know. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, if we run into anything that, um, fits the bill. And if there's suitable reason to think that he needs to be brought up well, in that uh, way. If something like that were to happen, I, we, we just need strong allies. We need a strong salt marsh right now and uh, to, to remain what we are. And I just don't see Galen is very strong right now. Not at all. So well, maybe he just needs some time off. Wouldn't that be the mm. thing to allow how him? Much, how much of what he is saying do I, I think is from his own brain? How much of it is being fed to him by... Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Um, Scare and Wave Chaser. Okay. That will be a difficult insight check as he is... Um, Super good at those. Can I do it yeah. as well? Because I have got good yeah. insight. Sure. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be bad. Yep. Yeah just an idea I had, so I'm glancing over, and I think that... Oh, I wrote a Kraken! You can't really yeah. see it from there. 26 total, but it's probably still not enough. I rolled a... I would have rolled a, a 20 if I had... In, had um, oh, I... Shoot! I should have used my inspiration! <laughs> I was gonna say it, but I didn't, I didn't want to have you burn it in the first hour or so of gameplay. 
Well, oh. you gotta use it. Use it or lose well, it. Prion's got it. I got the Kraken. Oh, Prion's 26. got it. 26. My first Kraken um, with the red dice. Boop, 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 boop. 26. Boop, 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 boop. <clears throat> Thank you, Liz. Despite... So, Anders is a performer, and he, you know that he oftentimes checks in with Skarin about certain things. Um, Skarin oh, always no, the, helping him out <laughs> with certain bits, but you see um, interesting moments happening um, in Skarin's facial expressions. It is incredibly slight, but you see as Anders begins to slowly set up a premise and then ask you something um it's not clear what he's getting to always at first but as he typically goes on and sets up a situation and then asks you something each time Scarin's jaw seems to tense just a little bit and when anders presents a situation in a way that is just vague enough or just not um not pointed or incriminating of himself the way that he delivers this to be a neutral party a concerned citizen every time his requests come off that way you see Skarin just relax ever so slightly which gives you the sense that quite a lot of this is prompted or coached <clears throat> pulling the strings oh. We'll but that's just Prion's you know knowledge that. for now. So mm -hmm. sorry. Let you know if we have any information that we think could help. I'd be, I'd be grateful. I'm depending on it. All right. Well, we're off on um, a voyage that has a um, an unknown end date. Um, not you know super long we're not gonna be gone months and months and months and months um but we're going farther down the coast than we have before um we will certainly come check in with you when we get back understood understood yeah well um safe voyages to you all thank you i hope you return soon hmm. and he kind of Seems to let out a bit of a sigh of disappointment before turning and walking away along okay. with Skarin. Sarayan sees um, Skarin and Anders begin to walk away, looks to Melvin. Can, can we go back now? I don't. I, I think they're fine on the ship. They clearly weren't calling us. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can, we can go back now. Oh, okay. You still have to okay. tell me all the things you discovered in your journal. We have to compare notes later. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sarayan walks a little ahead of him because she's mad that she was taken away from Anders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one, once he and Skarin are, like, far enough out of earshot... Whoops, dropped my pen. Um, gesticulated too wildly. Um, I'm just going to turn back to everyone else. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but the last couple of times that we've talked to him, I've got this really weird vibe that it's so hard to put my fingers on that his intentions are not necessarily above board. His handler's intentions. It's obvious yeah, that someone else scared. is pulling the strings here. Yeah. I yeah. can see it. You see it in the tension of his jaw every time that I boy speaks. It. Oh, I I always thought that he was pretty straightforward, to be honest. Garen or Anders? Anders. He's, he seems pretty on the up he's, and up. He's yeah, straightforward really, to the yeah. point of being able to be used. He's being told so, what to say. That's obvious. Yeah, he, of course. He's, he's genuine, so genuine, but he's... Yeah, he's gen genuine, but... The people that he surrounds himself with are not, and they're acting through him, and they want so, us to provide information that will lead to their um, counterparts being removed from the council. Which that's what that entire we have to wonder was. though is that necessarily a bad thing? 
I, I have a contribution. Um, yeah, what's as, that? So Anders and I, I think we actually have a lot in common um, because, you know, we both come from like noble upper class families. Oh. Um, and I just know that when I'm at home, people are constantly coaching me about how to behave and what to say. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if Scared, who does not seem very nice, is telling Anders what to say and do. I just think Anders is probably That's innocent. Extremely obvious that he is definitely put in the streets. So, you, you, you so think you're right. That, that Scarin is like Thank a life you. coach? No, 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 no. There's a difference between a life coach and a bad actor in the midst of your court. I mean, you've been there, right, Melvin? There's been bad actors in your court before. No, so I haven't. We have to okay, decide. well, we all know what that means. So. We have to decide then which side we want to back. If we Anders. are going to be caught up in all this. Well, well it's okay, not but about it's... the personalities, about what they represent for Saltmarsh. It's the it's the Neverwinter interlopers versus the salt marsh purists, which I think now it's I'm very intrigued by the fact that Gellin Primewater seems to me maybe teetering on his vote because from what I know, what I know about him and his background, I kind of look pointedly at um, Debris, um, he would not want other people in here. So I kind of wonder whether you know, the whole paperweight situation has contributed to this change. Hi. So you think it might have lit a fire under him? <laughs> or drained him? Do we want oh. to try and fix him so that he is strong to be a bulwark against influence? I think. Do we want to remove him? I don't know who to trust. Is it trust anyone other than I, I think we should me. stay as neutral as possible for now and sort of collect everything and just like keep it in mind. I, we don't know enough at this point to. The thing to, is, Somor believes that he's doing the right thing, I. Right? He does, yeah. But then does Somor know what his puppet master actually wants? I think the puppet monster wants something very, very different, which mm -hmm. is why he needs people removed. And I the think the Somo has got problem. no idea. If he has an idea, then he's an extremely good actor. I think the is, real answer is, to is this there... problem is for one of us to become powerful enough to run things here. Ugh. Please That's do not aggressive. ever put me there, because that is something I do not want. Mm. Well, so would there be like a city? Uh, do we, Debris? You you know a bit more about Salt Marsh's inner workings. Is there like a city council meeting or like a city clerk or like somebody that we could go to and about find those out? Sorts of things. Okay, it would, be, it, it would be. would be interesting. Well, I was just like that. That this is coming up now. It would be interesting to see what's coming before the council. We have enough information to destroy Galen Primewater, giving it, if we gave it to the right people. Um, I get Correct. a little confused. Uh, why would it be bad if influence from Neverwinter came down? I mean, I grew up there, and it's not that bad. I mean, there's a little bit of corruption, but like, I man, think I mean, part of it is I think part of it is an issue of principle that a a people that has not had outside influence before and has gotten used to a certain degree of autonomy doesn't like having other people come in and suddenly tell them how they're supposed to run things. But even there if it's are, for the better? even if it's for the better, people uh, sometimes keep in, prefer their freedom. Keep in to, mind, there are a great many people who do business here in Saltmarsh specifically because it's not part of the Lord's Alliance. There's that too. There's mm. all sorts of comings and goings of people because of that freedom. I see. But anyway, um, we could stand here on the dock debating this for several hours, or we could go deliver some octopus. So, I think we should probably just check off the things that are easy, just get that shit done, 
And then we can worry about a philosophical debate over the, you know, political interests of this settlement. That's with me. Is the octopus still writing on a giant book, Melvin? Oh, I'll I'll cast a tensor floating disc virtually. Okay. And we can put both um, the octo daddy and the octopus, or fish fish daddy. Fish rather. daddy, fish, fish daddy, daddy, and octopus. I really don't think we should have fish daddy go to Kaladek. Oh, okay. Do you want to just keep him in the brig? Wait, we leave him here then. I, I think he needs to go to the priest first. I think that we, if we give him to anyone, honestly, we reveal our hand. I don't think we reveal our hand if we give him to Keladek. What if we just kill him? Giving him to Keladek might no. be putting too many eggs in one basket. Why don't we mention it to Keladek? We could put him back in the ocean. No, I this isn't swim. a catch and release situation. We're not doing that. Sorry. Um, it would be interesting to see what what happens if we mention that to the wizard. Both the wizard and the priest, I think, are operating at least a little bit in autonomy. Revealing what we have done to either one of them is not necessarily going to be relieving it, relieving it, revealing it to um, anyone else. Okay. So, I just need to know whether or not to like put him back where well, he was. Or... Well, maybe we should start with um, delivering the octopus, and then we can make a decision about Fish Daddy depending on how he reacts to the octopus. I think we need to take him to the priest. If the priest can heal him, this guy goes back to what he was doing before, running his own business. Maybe his daughter back by his side. Maybe even a stronger witness against Gillen Primewater. Hi. His name is Talon, by the way. What? Fish Daddy Talon. I think we need to speak to him <laughs> as well first. We've already met. He's not going to tell us anything. No, but we've already established that by meeting the lady that we let go. She had no interest in turning away from this faith or for whatever they've become. But maybe speaking to the priest before we introduce the two, maybe the priest can do something. Who knows? If he can reverse Melvin. it, then he goes back to normal. He can then go back and run his... Okay. Gene, he'd, have to be, he'd have to be a willing participant. He'd have to be willing. And if he's not, then he goes back in the brig or whatever. But at the moment, there's no one running that business, which is why the young man here is on our doorstep asking questions. That's a good point. Hmm. <sighs> All right. So, to the priest, no. and then to Kaladek? Sure. Sure. We don't. We don't all have to go to Keladek or the, the priest. We could. In fact, we probably them. shouldn't all go to Keladek, given the amount of animosity that seems to be directed Perhaps towards him. We should go to the priest and then wait for cover of darkness to go to the. Or I could just wizard. go to Keladek with the octopus. Or you could just do that. Because I think Serayan should go with him, but. Yeah. Okay. I don't mind. I don't mind breaking into groups. But I don't think any of us should go alone, just in case. Especially if you're carrying someone. It's an octopus. It's not a person. Well, I mean, it stood on two legs, right? It was attached to a person's head. So How about this? Yeah, you're correct me if I'm wrong, but it important. is actually just an octopus, right? I yeah. thought I thought yeah, we were yeah. delivering like the head. I thought Epic. we were delivering the whole <laughs> body. Yeah, I thought we had no, the whole, we only the have gelata. fish daddy and the octopus. Just the little, the little piece. Just, just the octopus part, though. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Octopus in a zippy bag. Okay, got it. 
Okay, uh, yeah, I was but, thinking more like you were delivering at least a size of either a sizable chunk of a person or a person with an attachment. I thought we had the person with the attachment. So did I. DM, can you clarify that for us? I don't us? think we ever specify. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm pretty sure we didn't just take the octopus. I, I, yeah, he asked for the body of. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I thought he oh, asked body. for the body of the Kraken priest. So he did. He did. Oh. I misunderstood. Which is a symbiotic we sort of taking. situation. Okay. okay. In that case, yeah, I'll be I'll be using Tensor's floating disc to, uh, or okay. Melvin's floating book rather, <laughs> to <laughs> be transporting it. Okay. Okay. I, I still think you should take Sarayan with you, just in case. Sure. Yeah. That, that makes okay. sense. Okay. okay. And right. you guys can talk about your your notes on the way. It'll be great. No, that needs focus. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. We, we can't you. compare notes and, and walk at the same time. We no, because how fall. are we going to learn? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> My mistake. You will never be cast in an Aaron Sorkin feature. You cannot walk <laughs> and talk. Um, anyway. Who's Aaron um, Sorkin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's a feature? Good. So... <laughs> Oh my god. Um, so the the planet seems to be a split party. Wow. Uh, you guys <laughs> you guys like doing that. Uh, half going to the temple with uh, Fish Daddy and the other going with Octo Dude to the tower. Sure. Okay. Octo Dude. Right. So, Saran and Melvin, you head towards the tower of Keledek the Unspoken. Um, it is similar to um, as you saw it before, and the puzzle to get in is trivial. Having completed it the first time, you're able to walk across and put the summoned dagger into the neck of the correct sea elf and then move through to the interior of the tower, where you see Keledek himself, all nine feet of him, um, with a broom, sort of sweeping up ash from the floor of his study. There is also a small, demonic, devilish looking creature, an imp, just kind of going around and picking up what looks to be bits of entrails and body, uh, body parts from the floor. There are clearly about half of two different bodies, the upper half of one, the lower half of another, and they seem to be almost completely disintegrated onto the floor, um, lying there dead. And as Keladek looks through, he says, hmm, took you a little bit to get here. Heard you came into port almost an hour ago, but you've made good time. Was it about Ten and a half hours ago that you left the island? Uh, something like that, yeah. And it was about that time that these invaded my study. Look at them. They didn't look like this when they came in. Their features were yeah, I... warped. Teeth all throughout their mouths. Fascinating. But, and he kind of picks up the, um, reaches down towards the head of one of them, one of the head, and he kind of picks it up. The head, it, it seems like there was some damage already done. He, uh, you see, and he opens the mouth, gesturing to the, uh, no, this doesn't work. And he puts his foot on the chest of the body and then just <laughs> rips the head off. Ah, here we go. Now you see, and he holds it up to you and <laughs> opens the mouth. There is no sign of the transformation that I saw when they came in. Um, also, the time of day, silver, was no more effective against them. No sign of lycanthropy yet. Whatever this feature was that they were afflicted by seems to have vanished upon their death. And now they are normal dead Chandler bodies. Hmm. Mm, yeah. What are you gonna we... tell Anders when he comes to ask you about the Chandlers? Cause we said they're on vacation and I just think we should all get on the same page. Ah, lying to Anders Solmore is dangerous. That Scarin wave chaser that devises him is more intuitive than you know. 
But he has plans for you as well. I've been listening. He wants you as a ally. A very strong ally, in fact. So, if you fancy yourself powerful in the city, go along with him. Have, have He's you been looking us? to. Oh, frequently, yes. Oh, right. With your, with your imp, you do that a lot, don't you? Hmm. Yeah. People have developed the superstition that just by speaking my name, that I can hear whatever conversation they're having. Um, if I, if only that could be true, I would write my name in every book and scribe it on every doorstep so people just say it by accident. Wouldn't that be nice? But no, I can only listen to one conversation at a time, all contingent upon this one. And the imp is kind of, you look down, the imp is kind of gnawing on a bit of intestine and brings it away from his mouth and then quickly resumes cleaning up. So you've brought... Have you brought me my, um, creature? Yeah, um, we also saw a couple of those when we were collecting it. I point at the bodies. Humans, um, or...? I mean, How did they, they weren't when we fought them. They, they looked really? like... Really? And I sort of mime big snake jaws opening. Until we killed them, then they turned into humans again. Uh, I well, see. Well, you didn't actually kill any of them, did you? I thought you just kind of sat on the sidelines. Well, I tried to I help. did a lot of the killing. She does look like I, much more than more of a killer than you, boy. Yeah, I, t I took care of this one mostly and made sure he couldn't call lightning on us. That was... Ah, wise. I was contributing without killing things. I don't understand. I'll explain it later. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we have it. Uh, should I put it on a table, or what's the next step here? Uh, I've mostly prepared for what we need to do. Um, so uh, here, and he kind of pulls a, a um, rug aside that has been covering most of the floor, and you see drawn on the floor in. Um, um, chalk, it seems also some magical powders have been sprinkled across the floor. A large sort of what looks to be ritual magic circle. Just this, and then he pulls, a, he takes out the obelisk that you have given him, the, as you have named it, the paperweight, but the obsidian sort of obelisk, and puts it in the center. Now the creature, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, oh. Triton, would you mind separating its head from the body, please? including the octopus. So, okay, yes. So you want the head, but with the full octopus on the head, but the head away from the body? Please, yes, sever sure. it. Sure, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is just like when I did science, so, okay. And Serain pulls out her longsword and takes a whack at the head on the flying it book. Sheen slices clean through and the body drops away and you are there holding the severed head of a kraken priest. Is, sh where should I put it? I'll take that, thank you. He takes it and he um, uh, rotates it around a bit in his hands and kind of reaches under where the octopus's body has sort of overtaken the face. He feels around a bit for the eye sockets and you can see his hand working around there under the octopus f sort of fish flesh. And then he takes the head and moves over to the obelisk and just um, slams it down to the point where the, the obelisk seems to penetrate through the back of the skull and it kind of impacts there on the floor. And then he begins, um, he first snaps his fingers and all of the shades and shutters shut and it is complete darkness within the tower all of the candles snuff out and then he begins to chant and bits of light start to emerge from the head of this octopus um, swirling around almost like fireflies for a moment before coalescing on the ceiling like a star map lines like constellations begin to form between them and flashes of letters and then you can see bits of where the light seems to um 
gather more, almost like the Milky Way when um, when you stare at it. And there's no D and D Milky Way, but the equivalent for your What's eyes. The Milky where, way? Isn't where, it <laughs> shut up! <laughs> no, <it's okay>. Never. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of spell jammer nonsense is this? Which where the uh, where the stars are so small and so close together, it almost looks more like a congruent light rather than individual points of brightness and you can see flashes of imagery you see a beautiful ballroom with a um woman in a red gown and a black obsidian mask strolling through it for a moment then you see what seems to be a village festival with children traipsing around a maypole and then you see a sad elven face surrounded by desiccated leaves, gnarled branches, and indeed a tree that seems to be lumbering across a um, really an oaken trunk, more massive than you've ever seen it before. A small blue seagull upon her shoulder. And these images fade and then you also see a very, very tired Gellin Primewater, sitting at a desk, trying to keep his eyes open as he writes. You see this, and then flashes of arcane writing too quickly to ever um, be able to read, um, going back and forth. And then, Sarayan, something intrudes into your brain. A voice or a longing, something that you are your own will and your own experience for a brief moment is replaced by just utter coldness and the longing to be free um um you feel like you are trapped and you cannot do what you were meant to do and you hear a a voice just humming a bit in your head for a moment Oh, you're there. Persona's will cannot be done while I'm here. Come find me, please. Quickly! And then it cuts off and you are very... Um, quickly return to your own senses. And you see the rest of this ritual take place. There are more moments, flashes of scenes you don't understand, more writing, um, arcane diagrams that are displayed across the ceiling. And then it seems to flicker and fade. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, what what was fascinating? The, uh, all the things I, you brought me, right? They're tied to different places. One, a grove that seems to have been um, washed away by a tsunami at one point. The city of Porta Lucine. And then another idyllic village somewhere to the south. I don't really know the name of it, but sure enough, these seem to be the founding members of the Thalassic League. And only by... Um, finding the the token of the master, I believe that's what the writing said. At each of them, and reuniting them, can this true this this web of fate really be undone? Uh, um, we we uh, we found a, a door. Apparently, I didn't see it myself because I don't go in really? the water. Really, but it was yeah, underwater I, I and it had it. like holes for stuff, right, Sarian? Yeah, yeah. There. Oh, yeah. It. There, there were holes in the door, um, and it looked almost like the door was some sort of puzzle, and so that certain pieces corresponded. Do, do your children have the toy that has the holes in the, the, the piece of wood, and then they put certain shapes into those holes? That's what I would door never was. have children that are that dumb that would have to work to solve that. I mean, I immediately bypassed it because I'm very smart. But um, yeah, I've just seen oh, other, good. I saw other kids with it. I also, I have a quick question for you. Um, um, so d 
Did anybody else see see that the thing about persona? Weren't you paying attention? It just outlined the entire uh, the oath and the um, binding uh, agreement of the Thalassic League. It was all uh, and the locations of the founders. It well, no, did I all of that. that. But but I but I heard a voice in my in my head about persona. No one no one else heard that. I assume I did not DM. You you did not. Yeah. You must have been daydreaming. I do sometimes daydream about persona, but this is different. Now, there's one more thing. <clears throat> this needs to be done. But um, you have been obviously very helpful so far in this Sahuigan threat that has been the more immediate danger to Saltmarsh. Um, they're still there. But I've also seen, uh, yes, well, ancient enemy to all good creatures of well, the sea and those who work upon it. Now, there is something controlling them, something binding them to the service. It's that this is, if you see, and there's still a sort of bit glowing on the ceiling, any points. If I am seeing this correctly, there is a enormously powerful item, some sort of power source that they seem to have bound the Sahuigan to their will, at least partially, at least a clan of them. Um, the immediate threat to Saltmarsh could be undone by disrupting this, and I believe this is located at a location called the Isle of the Abbey. It is within a day's sail from here can be done and while it would prevent the how do you feel about this under Solmore by the way I don't I, I feel... he seems like a really nice guy I agree he doesn't oh, want yeah, the entire military nice. of Neverwinter and the Lord's Alliance brought down here to help with the Sahuagin threat outright warfare means forts fortifications and too many I mean, watching it, eyes and it would also mean roads that'd be kind of nice i mean i wouldn't mind some paved streets maybe if you learn how to swim it wouldn't be so bad out on the water well, we could just pave the streets and then it wouldn't be a problem my that point being you can expensive. you can likely end this the hooligan invasion would be very dangerous it would take countless lives, but it would not destroy Saltmarsh outright. It is just their first lashing out in the most immediate. The first thing you need to stop is this, if this is indeed your target. And I'm telling you this because I like it here. Everyone leaves me alone. This is my land. This is where I do my research. So... Well, if it's any I don't want it overtaken. Even were we to fail, you're not very pleasant to be around, so I'm sure that people would probably still leave you alone. Hmm. He lets out sort of a strange, toothy smile. I've been told that. He shrugs. Me too. All right then. Um, one last thing, and then you, you've probably already stayed too long. Um, uh, Melvin. Mm -hmm. I have... You, you brought me this mask, and he gestures to the mask that was part of the ritual that he cast. Do you know the, the, uh, what that dust was and its nature that was upon the mask? Uh, no, I thought it was dust. I didn't take it's called a liar's very dust. close look at it. It's called liar's dust. It's incredibly valuable. Um, traded as sort of a black market spellcasting component. It needs to be activated in a way to make its potency fully realized. I know how to do that, and um, as thanks for bringing it to me, um, and it's immense value, I've done some for you. So, and he hands you a small crimson pouch with the uh, letter K in golden thread sewn upon the front, and then cinched with a golden um, uh, little rope. You... It will empower your spells. Just dip your fingers in, use a bit of a pinch, and use it as a additional somatic component to your spell casting. It will empower it with, well, 
dis disruptive force that is innate to the nature of the Lyos dust. It's fascinating. It's the only substance like it, and it only comes from Porta Lucine, by the way. You should ask Mariah about it. I'm sure that she's... You know, it's not evident that this is liar's dust, but usually it's not found loose and laying about like this. It's very valuable and often uh, traded by those by those of her kind on the black market. Oh well, th thank you. Um, but this is this is um, activated. This is catalyzed, um, catalyzed liar's dust. The would, would uh, transformation has been complete. To, to do that. Uh, it's it's really it's really quite simple um and he i will actually um show you the item um if you guys can pull up in your roll 20 if someone would like to read this and hopefully i haven't mm. made any spelling errors melvin how about would you melvin? like to read this um all right item um this crimson leather pouch is filled with a small amount of fine gray dust an ornate letter K is embroidered in the side with golden thread, and the top is cinched shut with a golden cord. On your turn, you can use a bonus action to pull a pinch of dust from the pouch with a free hand and utilize it as an additional somatic spellcasting component. When you do so, the next spell you cast before the start of your next turn is empowered with disruptive magic. If the spell deals damage of any type, you may deal an additional 2d6 force damage to one creature affected by the spell. The arcane nature of this dust allows you to use it even when spellcasting through a focus. The pouch contains five pinches of dust. Only one charge may be used at a time. Damn. When Melvin Hill only use it for the disc. <laughs> <laughs> like a really big disc. Oh, look how huge that book is. Oh, my God. Well. The biggest of books. Ba, ba, da, da, ba, ba, ba. Anyway, that is the extent of... Um, Keladit kind of hands that to you and says, well, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, it was, it was, thank you. Uh, we'll be in touch. I have a question, DM. Yeah. Would the voice that Sarayan heard have been familiar to her or no? No. Okay. It was not. And as you all leave, we will, um, um, pan over to, um, the group going to the temple. To the priest. To the priest. To the priest. Let me find my temple page. Find your um, temple page. I find your lack of temple page disturbing. Disturbing. <laughs> um, so, Power! as usual, um, there is no one here but Welgar Brinehand, who is sitting, tending to everything happening, um, kind of humming some naval hymns to himself as you approach. Alka hear us when we call to thee for those in peril on the sea. Hmm. Elise. Uh, hi. Prion. Mariah. Nether. Welcome. Usually it's you need something when you come here, so what is going on? So, uh, can I jump in really quick with a point of clarification for the those uh -huh. of us who are here? How did we bring Fishman with us? Matt. We I zoomed in a sack we, we over the shoulder, until... but it like, might have did, been. Yeah. Okay, than so that. is is like, Prion literally coughing <laughs> along with a sack on his back? Okay, just wanted to make sure. I, I can't do it. I me we as Nether. I don't. I don't. Did he say Nether? He did, he did say Nether. He did. He did. Well, he did. if anyone wouldn't remember or recognize yeah. you. Yeah. Well, to least Shrinks this is uh, a little I... bit. This is your abode, so how about you take lead on this problem? Okay. Um, so be fun. So, yeah, we need. 
we found ourselves in a bit of a situation and um I, i'm just this is can i just we speak him plainly to lease can i we can want I a consult him? Yeah, there's a thing that happened, and we're wondering if we can undo the thing, and you're the only person that I know who would be able to maybe, maybe give us an answer. Prion, could you show him fish daddy? Please? He kind of looks to uh, Prion. If you have what I think you have slung over that shoulder there, raising the dead is... That'd be an awfully hard Ooh, It's not a dead body. Not dead. Not dead, no, not a dead is, body. This is nope. Talon Chandler. Yeah. But he's um, a bit... Uh, extra? He looks human now. But he... No, he doesn't. Well, I have Has a, he turned I back? Look at him. He turned back to I human, didn't, didn't he? Did he turn back to human? In the brig? I don't think he did. Yeah, he, he did. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think we've actually talked about it. <laughs> can we? Can right, we sorry. maybe not do this in front of p the other people? Where can can we... the temple's oh, empty we... right now, except okay. for him? So. I, I sit him down. Obviously, just, just he's tied up with a sack over his head. Bring him in, then. It's probably the first time I've seen a Chandler here in this oh, holy place. I wonder why. I wonder if he's besides that little Kaylin. She's a nice one. She's. Hi. Wandered out here at night before to look at the frescoes. Hey, I'm curious to see what's going to happen when this guy is, crosses the, the threshold into a temple. Yeah, we'll, we'll come in. I'm excited. Nether takes okay. a step back. Prepares. Right spell. then. What's wrong with him? Are we inside the church? Yeah. Mm hmm. I sit him down yeah. on the, one of the pews, and uh, obviously he's tied up, and I will take his, the sack off his head. <sighs> Where am I? The church. Sample. Well, God. Who? Mariah. Oh. Why am I tied up? What's happened to me? You know why you tied. We are. You're tied up. <sighs> what do you mean? What? What's going did on? you not? Did you forget about the part where you attacked us? I would. Well, well God, I'm confused, Mariah. What? What's going on? I said, how about we get a zone of truth up? Uh, can you do that, please? Do we priest? have that? I'm we have a zone of truth. It me who have priest it. Priest? He shakes his hand Aww. and says, "Sadly, no." Well, <laughs> so we we discovered the most likely reason why you've never seen a Chandler here. Um, Fucking fish nice. people. I was Sorry. trying to be you... nicer about it. He uh, said be direct. They're cursed or something. There's some strange pact. They're a part of the with... Thalassic League. Okay, we don't need to get into that kind of shit right now. Wellguard but... shoots you a steely eye as, he, as you say that. Yeah. The short of it is that he's a fish man. The rest of the Chandlers are mostly fishmen. We have a baby who's about 5% fishman, and I would like him to not be a fishman. So if there's a way that this process can be reversed, then that would be fabulous. Thus, the consult. I look to the father. Hey, because she got a daughter, and she's all alone. Well, she's not. She's got us as family. But if we can fix you, then maybe she may, may still have some hope. Your sister hmm. didn't want to be fixed. Yeah. Or whoever she was. Niece. Yeah. Prion's the reason you're alive right now is what it really comes down to. He's trying to give you a chance to be saved so that you can have a family and actually support society like a normal person, not a fish person. Please. <clears throat> May I have a drink of water? I'm no. so thirsty. No. You've... I must have been asleep for so long. I. He's just trying. It looks like he's trying hard to swallow. Again, is he play acting? Not make an insight check. <laughs> I'm absolutely doing that. I rolled a seven. So that's thirteen. Hmm? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You've got thirteen. I've got mine. Yeah. 
I got 17. 17. All right, 17. Talise. 17. Yeah. 17. Let's see here. <laughs> like, that gets you nothing. Uh, <laughs> no, it... Uh... So, um, you do sense that he is, he looks very thirsty and he looks physically uncomfortable. However, there is some deception happening here. Um, yeah. The not remembering the mentionings of the Thalassic League, all of them, you can see sort of micro reactions in his face mm -hmm. as he takes in this information. Very quietly, Nether will recite everything that has happened um, since going to the graveyard, what we learned there, and mm -hmm. what we determined mm -hmm. when we went to the Chandler's house, and what we saw, what I saw them do with the baby, why we went to the island, and what we did there. Lay it all out. Word for word. Welgar will take it in very quietly and then say, You best just bag his head again then. It can't be fixed now. There is hope for that little child if it hadn't gone the if it hasn't gone the full transformation and spent the time there. This one is an old legend come to life. And sounds like there's many others along with him. We call these a deep scion. Okay. Things transformed. While he has memories, they're just tools. Tools to use to further a darker end. There's nothing left of Talon Chandler if ever there was something. No, his only purpose is to blend and to bend this world's will to that of the Abolith that he serves. The Abolo what now? Abolith? Okay. More ancient than the gods, they dwell deepest and most profound in the depths. I Damn it. I hate <laughs> Well, fuck. Okay. So, Priyan, you might as well rebag him. Oh, I rebag him. So, shall we just take and him to the don't let him lizard? get back into the water. Or yeah. Whatever you do. What you intend to do with him. Oh, maybe the wizard think... can do experiments on him or something. I don't know. Or shall I just put him out of his misery? Honestly, I, I have no, I have no preference. But whatever it is, he can't, he can't survive. It's pretty fucking horrible. Great. So I mean, well, Gar, if you don't think it's terribly distasteful, maybe we'll just head back out and I don't know, take care of this. <sighs> I only wish I had seen it sooner. How many of those stones did you see that said lost at sea? Ooh, quite a number. It's like a dozen, right? Yeah. Valkyr takes care of those whose bravery loses them upon the waves. But those pulled beneath by these ill forces, I worry that even his strongest arm may not reach them so easily. Umberly and the rest shall answer for this. Umberly. The daughter, she has an amulet that can summon something. Oh yeah, if it hits a certain depth in the water, it goes all crackiny. That's how they did their sacrifices, I assume send out their See. chosen children with the amulet and then it all goes kablooey. Have you tried destroying it? Uh, no. Right now it's just locked up. Uh, we're not exactly possessed of an immense amount of firepower. If you can destroy it, do so. 
If you cannot... How do you recommend... Well, I can't think of a much safer place than with all of you these days. Well, actually, if the magic can be destroyed, then the mundane item itself is probably fine. I should take a look at that when we get back. Thank you for your help. Um, the child, the baby. The the girl here, and, she's still a bit in yeah. shock. Have you brought Kaylin as well? Or we didn't. We or... had not said that we were bringing okay. either of them. Okay, so I she's back I at the ship. I thought we'd leave but... them alone. All right. Yeah. Is there any chance that they might find a temporary home here? I can see that that's arranged. Okay. I think Thank it's you. better that we don't bring them out on the water for a little while. Yes. Agreed, I. Understood. Thank you for your help again. Any luck on this vampire? <laughs> no sign yet. He no visited, victims either. He visited me again. And asked about what did he say then? He wanted to know if I wanted to know the next victim. He plans to up, append evil, even though he is evil himself. <laughs> Suppose it all just depends on a certain point of view. Speaking about certain secrets, ancient secrets here. <laughs> I don't know what he means, but after seeing what we've been seeing here with these fish people, maybe this is what he's talking about. I don't know. And is just like any profane, hell-bound entity, mortal or immortal, their path leads them to the fires below. I agree. Well, they can you. play god or deity all they want, but that is the greatest fallacy that they play of all their little tricks. I will right. keep a vigilant eye. Thank you. Thank you as I, well, I... again. Well, we'll make sure that Kaylin gets and the baby get up here safely before we depart. And I uh, guess we got to go take mm -hmm. care of town, guys. Let's go. We can hand wave that if you want. Do you plan to just execute him? Oh, just execute him. Yeah. Yes. Just leave him somewhere and execute him. Okay. Then it can be done. Okay. I'm going to bury him up to the neck and uh, stitch his eyes open. And then... <laughs> okay, Debris, you yeah, having a little bit of a hard time there? Put a cage of bees on his head. Yeah, but we don't, ret the bees. We don't return no. the body to the water. We no, we'll, we'll make it quick. We'll bury it somewhere uh, off the shadow. Somewhere water. really dry. Yeah. <laughs> the desert. Okay. The desert, yeah. We, okay, the yeah. desert of We head out to Athas. <laughs> Straight into the swamp. We'll be back and, in six yeah. months. <laughs> totally dry, Just, right? And it... So yeah. at this point, um, starting to be evening, you guys regather, having spent a few hours around. Um, we can hand wave also gathering any supplies unless there's something you want okay. to do before you head out on your voyage again. And then we just will quickly bring Kaylin and Bab up. And if there's anything that people want to say in that department. No. Cool. Then I, I will merely leave her with the note that we will be back and she will be safe with um, Welgar. Um, but we will be back and we will check in on her when we do. All right. She is still a little distant. Um, she acknowledges your request, but mostly vacant eyed staring, though she does seem to perk up and gain some energy looking around at the frescoes of the temple here. The depictions of Volker and other seagoing gods um, here seem to sort of have a draw to her. So That being done, you all regather at the ship, I imagine, and, is there, uh, yes. and you can reunite and debrief each other. I assume you all tell each other everything. Yes. Correct. Okay, and then you all know each of these things that have just happened. Yippee. <laughs> so shall we cast off or? Ugh. Ooh, actually, before, mm, just in case, I'm going to go into the lockbox in my cabin. I'm going to ask Melvin at the very least to 
uh, join me. Um, I am leaving it in the box. I just I just open the chest. Just leave it in there. I want to try casting dispel magic on it. And uh, I would be able to tell you generally how strong the magic is. I did do an identify on it previously. Right. Okay. Um, make a caster level check, Mariah. Okay. <gasps> Gonna use my inspiration. Double crack and dice. Don't fail me now. Ooh, okay. So one of them was a one, but the other was a 17. So 17 plus four is 21. Wow. That's full. Uh, nice. With that with that roll, you could dispel any spell that existed if it is indeed a spell that is uh, sure. doing this. Uh, yep. With that roll, you see um, a sort of faint light start to shimmer around it and then it simply cracks down the middle and lays there inert i'd like to yeah cast detect magic can can confirm you detect no magic coming from the amulet with a massive dispel magic roll Okay, so we're safe. It's on one that? of the ways Several to destroy other it. Several things on the ship have gone inert. Shit! I don't want to see my Melvin, your, sp your spell book is just a picture book now. It's like oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie! Amazing. All right. Um, and then with that, I will feel entirely comfortable telling mm -hmm. the crew to take the ship out on the water. And then I think it's just a matter of us deciding what our heading is. Well, well we have this aisle of the abbey that we just heard about that has a magical oh, yeah. artifact on it we could yeah. go there do we do we want to make the destruction of the control over the suhu again our primary goal i think so i mean that's what's most important in seems my like an immediate threat as opposed to this other which might be a bit further off then to the Isle of the Abbey it is, and I will let you know, Peter, that Abbey is officially triggering for me from missed opportunities, thanks to Curse of Strahd. So thank you for bringing that up again. <laughs> are we gonna meet? Are we gonna meet a Sahu again, Otto? Um, you know, I can't. <laughs> I can't answer anything. You know, one way or another. Uh, so uh, that's a no. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I was yeah. muted. I was going to say, God's sake, Peter, get some proper material. Get some new material, you know? Stop using the same thing. <laughs> um, no! Auto, there is something that another would like to do, but it might be able to, might wait until we come back from our break. Okay. okay. Uh, um, but yes, you are headed for the Isle of the Abbey. Do you tell this, any of the sailors or anyone um, where the head, where the heading is, where you're headed for? Got no do we, not to, have we? Does Melvin... Know do, where yeah, we're do going? I know anything about the Isle of Abbey? Well, I will say, uh, make a history check, and um, I I'll give you advantage on that. I'll help. Okay. So I will say this, Mariah. Have Thank you, you ever, advantage. have you ever um, been in with any crews that are proper pirates who pretty much maraud and pillage, or has it? Yeah. Couple of times. Yeah, it's been like do what that. You gotta okay. do. Um, <laughs> some of these crews have been known to um, barter off goods to a group of um, clerics to Umberley at the Isle of the Abbey. Never getting that close, but you will know that you've put ashore or put um, put in near there, okay. um, and taken a boat to um, a sandy dune, which is the only way to the island. Um, gotcha. So, Melvin, sorry, what your history uh, roll being? It was a 17. I rolled a 1 and a 10, so, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, you know that there's an abbey there that you don't really know if it's evil there or if it's just reclusive hermits there, but you've, you've seen it on a map before. Um, that's about... That's about it. You know it's been there for a while. But Mariah, you know that there are um, worshippers of, as you understand it, Umberly, and that it is surrounded by jagged rocks, and there's only one way, really, to approach the island, as far as you know. Um, Exciting. 
So in about four hours, that location, the Isle of the Abbey and its skull dunes, as they are called, is where you will be after our break. So we resume heading out towards the Isle of the Abbey. Um, between the knowledge of Melvin and Mariah, and probably with the help of the Quartermaster, um, Talise as well, you are able to plot a course that direction. You think it will take you um, probably around six to eight hours, long enough for you guys to rest up, let your crew um, take over the sailing. Uh, the Isle itself, as we mentioned, is surrounded by quite a few jagged rocks. It's a very treacherous approach, but between here and there, there are no obstacles charted. Um, should be smooth sailing for the most part. Cool so beans. as you go on through the evening. During this voyage, uh, no. Nether spends a good portion of the first part of it um, in her quarters. It doesn't come out for a while. Eventually okay. She does. Is there something that uh, that you would you wanted to do, or did you want to do that later? Uh, did yes, we just brush over it, or do we need to do it retroactively? Or uh, perhaps, perhaps. It's fine. You something mentioned I kinda it. Kind of. I might need to discuss with you, and we might we need, might need to get on the same page as opposed to um, to just have it happen and take i think it would take up a lot of game time so okay um, all right let's 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 get back to it then uh, dm uh, I, I would like to say that uh, melvin will ritually cast water breathing at some point during the journey um okay targeting the rest of the crew he'll he'll gather the the party and cast it on everybody cool It'll last for 24 hours so just in case all right good deal um, so you all have uh, water breathing cast upon you now as you sail out towards the Isle of the Abbey um, some of the crew is a little leery um, knowing some of the maybe a few of the same facts that Mariah does uh, they seem a little bit nervous about the heading but obey without questioning good after <laughs> <laughs> after taking your long rest you do see ahead of you a lone island um, it almost looks like a um, stone set into a field of grass where um, around the sides of the stone have grown up um, weeds and such uh, with the plane itself being flat so the wa the plane of the water is flat the isle rises up and around it you can see almost like a fence of jagged rocks completely around it knowing the heading you need to take you do bring the ship around and you can see a sandy patch to the south side of the island that you know is the skull dunes this is the place where most, if you were ever to go visit these um, fearsome clerics, this is where you would put in the boat. Um, typically, though, they would meet you there. You would signal them or some such, but um, this not being a uh, that type of expedition, that won't be an option. Mm. Well, couldn't it be? Or couldn't we pretend to be? <laughs> It feels like when we took this ship all over again. We could try. Although, eh. DM, do I remember what the signal would be? Typically, you would do a trip around the island flying a particular flag to signal to any watchers that what your intention is. Is this a flag that we have? Um, yes. Okay. It's a combination. Um, okay. By flying different flags off of your tallest mast, you can signal a number of things, even to other passing ships. Um, mm. The uh, most common being a identifier of the ship and then some other flags that um, 
with a particular combination of uh, bunting, basically, you can right. uh, an observer can see that it says the, the most famous being "Signal me all well." Those four <laughs> words, um, and in that they will a passing ship going a long distance will take down those notes, and then when they come into a nearby port, they will report that, "Oh, I saw this ship." They signaled all well, you know, they are on their voyage. So okay. things like that, you can do a little so, I mean, so uh, bits like that. Is, I mean, is there- So you can, you could, Mariah knows the code. It seems like gibberish, but uh, to most, but it would be a sign, at least to her understanding that we are marauders. We have ill-gotten goods that we would like to sell to you, the servants of Umberly. Right. So the question no, is: not... Is this the only port, or I mean, should we like try to get onto the tr onto the island somewhere else? I mean, we all have Oops, water breathing, is... so we could totally do that. But this is the only well, place because the rest of it's mm -hmm. surrounded by jagged stones. So this is the only place that we could put the boat easily. You guys could go on a different way, but I remember I can't swim, so well, we'll tell you. I would just sink still. And the um. It's jagged rocks and then also cliff faces. Uh, oh, so it's not just jagged rocks. It's also like a bit of a climb and all that. So Quite a bit of a climb, yes. Then I guess the question is then, are the clerics of Umberly, are they the ones responsible for sending the Suhu again? If, if that's the case, then just coming into port and they're probably going to attack us. If we think that there are two separate entities here, both the clerics and then whoever is controlling the Suhagen, then perhaps a, a way to get onto the island yeah. without attacking the clerics is possible. And as you pull in, as you begin to get closer, you see what looks to be two smaller boats, almost jolly boats, that look to be wrecked near the um, entrance to the Skull Dunes. And mm -hmm. also a pillar of smoke on the island that seems to be rising straight up into the sky. Oh. I send doll. Just, I was getting all the information out. Took a, took yeah. a second. Um, My bad. While doll is doing um, that, I'll have the crew just get the flags out, but not okay. fly them yet. A couple of the special crew kind of seem to acknowledge and make a gesture of understanding if not uh, complete understanding to your orders um okay. and we'll do so begin getting the flags the signal flags ready and you kind of begin to lower sail to um sit a bit just off this island and as doll goes out 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 um, probably close to a uh, kilometer. You're, are you able to communicate with uh, him mm -hmm. that far? Okay. And see through the eyes? Yep. Anywhere on this plane. You see a number of... Um, there are a couple shacks and stuff on this island. You notice that there aren't any trees? It's just overgrown shrubberies, thickets, um grass and uh, bits of um well it's just basically that um scraggly plants rock and sand on top of the cliff and then as doll continues to go you see what seems to be actually an a large structure ransacked and burned Ah. Well, that's probably... Does it look like a burned temple to Umberly? Potentially. If not originally, it could be. All right. So I'll have Dahl come back, and as, she, as he's flying back, I'll say to the group, I think that whoever lived here uh, was very recently attacked and potentially destroyed. Well, then let's go on a rescue mission, shall we? I think that we might be a little careful. Those wrecked boats look a little fresh. 
Do they indeed, DM, look fresh? Um, yeah, make a perception check. I'm where you are. <laughs> Who is that to? We can both make it. I rolled a 19. Oh, those of you asking, yeah. Mm. Oh, well, if you rolled a 19, then we'll go with that. Sorry, I was muted. I will look as well. Okay. I rolled a four, so it's ten. It's far yeah. away. Um, it's just seaweed, Brian. Um, clearly. <laughs> uh, looking it? ahead towards the rocks, Mariah, you're seeing the the tides, seeing the um the way things are sort of shifting back and forth, and it, it seems that these rocks were placed here at some point, and um. Uh, the or it's not the rocks the boats were placed here at some point and the way that they are broken it seems that they were left in this place and that they the tide had uh crashed them against the rocks so okay. um it, it just looks like boats that were improperly tied and left to the okay. mercy of the chop here i think we might be okay actually how about um we could take the jolly boat um let pixie you know, stay out on the water. All right, sounds so. good. All righty. At the plan? We'll put someone competent in charge on the boat and head on out. Drag a weather eye out, especially for things that might be under the surface. Okay. Not oh, oh. dragon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just quickly. Um, sadly, we didn't even complete the level one hype train, but a massive thank you to everyone that took part. Uh, I think my last donation was a little late. Literally, sorry. Do you know, I, I think I do you know what? That, that would have topped it over to a level one anyway. So let's let's say we'll oh. give away a, like, the five one at the end anyway. Um, so a massive thank you to Max Slacker for a thousand bits. Much appreciated. 1100 uh, actually. Oh, 1100 total, yes. Sorry, I was scrolling up yeah. to get the other one as well. Yeah. Um, how many was that all together? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, 1500. So that's, well, we don't need any D20s, do we? Does anyone need a D20 inspiration? I believe uh, Mariah used hers to dispel some magic. I did, yes. Ah, oh, so would you say one, one uh, inspiration and one healing potion? Sure. Um, feel free. You're in a boat next to one another. You all can decide who gets the healing potion. How powerful is it, DM? But a massive thank you to everyone that, um, that put in. Oh, do I get train. inspiration then? You do, yes. Yes. <gasps> Yay. I think. It's normal, isn't it? I can. I, I have trouble remembering what my own policy is for healing potions. Lower is better. Is it 20% that we decided? It's 20%. Or is it? yeah. It's 20%. Yes. Yeah, so it's a greater healing potion. Oh. Thank, you. Thank you very much. I'll take it. Okay. Nice. Awesome. Thank you all. That'll be good. That'll be good. All right. So, so we press forward. Press forward and make your way up to the dunes. The skull dunes. Um there are probably at this point the sandy beach is quite expansive in front of you um bits of grasses and the the they actually do form windswept dunes for a little while here in front um and you can see maybe a thousand probably two thousand feet back it begins to rise up to the more plateau level but first in front is the sandy dunes being swept by the wind. You can see little bits of maybe a handle of a dagger, an arrow stuck into the ground here and there, scattered throughout as you land at the very tip. And then, um, you, he was almost invisible before, but just kind of crawling his way up from the water, from where those cracked ships were. A man with, um, uh, a half-elven man with an arrow stuck in his shoulder. This <coughs> help, please. <coughs> uh, <gasps> head 
over in that direction. Can someone try to figure out if he's a wait, fish man? Please? Wait. Uh, Let me come to you. Ah. Uh, and he kind of begins to crawl through the waters. The sands. Full. Full of the undead. Uh, <laughs> Everywhere. Huh. Uh, Oh, alive! They killed does this man look? So many of us. Looks like he's dying. I was like, almost not. Yeah, uh, almost not. So he's coming to us. He yeah, said? he's kind of crawling across the. Um, his body's sort of half under the water as he's crawling his way, bleeding out into the water, but crawling on the sand his way now? towards all of you. You've just. It's your boat has just um, moored sort of onto the sand into the very southern tip. Nothing seems to have happened so far. Would Saran be able to hop down and render aid or try to bring him up onto the boat? Sure, he crawls probably about 15 feet from your boat at this point and uh, he's... Uh, uh, groans in pain as you pick him up. Um, I would like to expend some points for lay on hands and just give back like five HP. Okay. Uh, he kind of breathes a sigh of relief and then uh, breaks off the point of the arrow that's protruding from the um, front of his chest here, tosses it aside and spits after the arrowhead. Would you mind the, the other side? Uh, uh no, 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 no. I, I'm Saran, she says as she puts her hands on him again. And it's good to meet you, but would you yank that shaft out of my shoulder first? Oh, oh, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and she grabs around the base of the arrow and yanks it up. Sorry, and I be Ilgar. I'm at your service. Hi, Ilgar, Ilgar you said? Um, Hi. What, what brings you here? What brought you here? Well, let's put it this way. I'm in no place to fight or provide much assistance. But I can tell you everything I saw from right here. If you let me forget whatever happened after I tell you and just blend into that fancy old crew of yours. Can you see those nice sails, those... Arm straight masts. She's a beaut, that she is. And I've toiled on, well, many a larger, many a smaller craft over my years, so I'd do one more. I, I'm not, I'm not the captain, um, but, but Mariah is. Does he want on the ship? say you, Captain Mariah. Yeah, yeah, he wants to be in the crew. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give lock, lock eyes with Talise and Prion and w with the kind of like, what do you think with the sort of implication of maybe an insight check should be rolled? Yeah, I, I've been like standing there very sus of him. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna look at them and Super see sus. if they give me a nod, yes or no. I kind of would, okay. I would like their opinion of his character. Yes. Do I need to roll? Uh, I, I rolled a natural a one, Prion's sight, doing up your shoelaces. <laughs> I rolled a 24. <laughs> wow. Very insightful today, Talise. Um, so Nether, using um, Doll for a, uh, a uh, art sense, um, you see... You sense frightened but optimistic and lawful evil. Mm. 
out of curiosity, how many of our sailors are lawful evil? Um, a <laughs> few. Okay. Yeah. Not a ton, but a few. And Talise, looking this guy up and down, pirate. You know, he's absolutely yeah. a pirate. He, sun, sun, uh, sort of parched by the sun tanned, um, hair sun bleached. He is salt crusted, and even, um, you notice that, uh, maybe he has like a trinket that maybe was made from a body part at one time on his belt. Like it's, he, it's hard to tell. It could be an animal, but you're also like, ooh, man, everything he carries looks like a grisly tool of war and, or of sailing. And it's, uh, he, yeah, he's, he looks he's, like he's, a, a marauder pirate, if you've ever seen like, one. <laughs> he's, he's chill? Chaley like. <gasps> Chaley! Looks Hi. like Chaley! Welcome! Um, mimic. What is up? Oh, not a mimic. You are storming a beach. You're about, or you are on a beach right now. You are attacking an island or investigating an island um, that you know there's a very, very powerful artifact aboard that could help you stop the Sahuig invasion in Salt Marsh. So Ooh. that is what you're doing. I would show you a camera, but it's just OBS just keeps freezing. It's just pain uh -oh. in the ass. <laughs> I've got to wait for it to unfreeze. Maybe she is a mimic. She is, yeah. Shh! I'm not a mimic. Um, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a people. I'm a people. <laughs> I'm a people. All right. So that is what you um, learned from the insight check and the heart sense. So. So uh, I'm so Rain, definitely going to like, I'm just going to like look at the captain and kind of nod. Like, yeah, there's nothing to be suspicious about. He looks like and is exactly, you know. He's an open book. Okay. And what's Saran doing? Uh, Saran is going to turn her attention back to Ilgar as does Mariah give a signal that it's okay for him to get up on the ship? Um, I'll, I'll also check in with uh, Debri. Debri shrugs her shoulders. But we either take him with us or we leave him here to starve. Yeah. Chip it is, as long as you can follow some orders and, uh, you know, not do anything stupid, then you're welcome. Well, I think I'm alive right now because I followed orders and avoided doing stupid things. Um, so you, you mentioned me. that there, there's, there's undead here? Aye. Uh. More than I've ever counted in my life. So what were your previous orders? I was to guard the boat. Which one? That Both one. of them. As he points to the ones wrecked on the rocks. So the assumption should be that you and your previous crew were here to storm the dunes. And they did I... not make it back. Who was your previous Don't crew? know the exact details, but we were going to take whatever this oil had to offer. Who was your previous crew? Who was the captain? Who was the ship? No, oh, hell no. But just a moment here, we sailed on. The Amber Viper. That be one of them. And ah, uh, the sister ship. Oh, Captain. Captain, that would have been, ah, uh, uh, yes. Well, most people just called him, uh, most people just called him the Raven, but his real name was, uh, um, James Alistair Darby. <laughs> uh, do these names ring a bell? Okay. DM. Um. Uh. Do they smell of something no. being pulled freshly from one's ass? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Does he speak of the Ripe. truth? <laughs> Seems to be. Yeah. Anyway. And the other uh, one was the um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the other ship later. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, oh, I, I, have, I have another question for you, uh, Ilgar, actually. Um, so you said where, where are the undead supposed to be? You see the sand there, Triton? Yeah, they're in the sand. Every damned inch of it. They fought every step they took. Oh. 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 Okay. Um, Can we see blood on the sand? Gonna elbow oh. Nene. Doesn't Nene have some divine eyes and sense grave? Would do it. Probably. Well, was, or divine sense, or I was getting there. Eyes of a grave. Okay. <laughs> I guess that it, it's fine. Whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. Aww. It's okay. Background here, so where's my eyes of the grave? I do have that. Gotta get to eyes of the grave. So one thing you notice, though, is he says, "I there were, and bodies and arrows, and, well, all sorts of slaughter there were. But look at those winds; they blow constant here." And you can indeed see the sand sort of shifting over the top, blowing constantly. And even a little bit of a, the dagger hilt that you saw sticking out of the sand when you came now is just fairly visible and then being covered up by sand again. The skull dooms. Apt. They fought a path through, and each step they took, as I said, they popped up. But maybe if you follow that path, you can avoid some of them. They slew all in their path as they made the way forward. Well. How many of your crew made it? Maybe half of them. Which is what? Two dozen. Yeah, but we've got a cleric. Are that two dozen crew, are they the ones responsible for the fire? I... I have to imagine so. How long ago? Well, they made their way there a couple of days ago. It was only yesterday they were on their way back. Came back through the dunes, fought their way through again. So I have to assume. Saw the masts full of sails at the two ships. And saw the bodies being covered up. And there I was, sleeping in the sun, unconscious from this damned arrow wound. Didn't even see me, I have to imagine. Bad luck. Damn. Met by some good luck. You are, for you are fortune in the wind, Captain Mariah. So to, to just meta it out here. They landed, he stayed behind, took an arrow, took an arrow in the knee. Mm -hmm. And then um, they traveled over the dunes, fought their way through the undead, did their business, came back, fought their way through the undead again, and then left and left him? Yes. Along with the okay. boats? Two of the boats, at least. Well, there are, there are fewer of them. Yeah, they wouldn't need as many boats if that's a whole a good bunch point, of them right? died. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Is my insight in, is my insight check still going, or was that a one-time? No, this kind of applies to the conversation. Okay. He seems to be telling the truth, as far as you can tell. It says, if we go along the path that they went, we'll encounter less undead... And if we don't, then they literally come up every square inch. Sounds like it. All right. The path it is. So 
Sounds like a smart plan. All right. Well, he is in no shape to accompany you. I'm going to ask, what do we do with him right now? He can guard the boat. <laughs> but don't take our boat. Oh, the boat. Take our boat. Guard the boat. Guard the boat. Guard the boat. <laughs> Pass anyway. him off on the next group that comes by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, all right. Your first order, then. Guard the boat. I got Mariah. <laughs> and, all right. So, the beginning of the pirate's path. Oh, no. <laughs> the pirate's path. The pirate's path. The level up path is what I heard. This- X is where you are right now. Who, yeah. who is leading? I will lead. in the attempt to follow this path. Uh, whoever has good survival, should I will lead. lead. Do you have good survival? Yes, but I will okay. lead. But before we do leave, I speak to whoever's in charge of the ship that we've put. That if anything fishy goes on with that guy, stick him in the brig. Thought they're all back on the boat. We had the jolly boat. Yeah, we yeah. were in the jolly boat that whole time. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's, he's not. He's on the guarding ship. our he's, jolly boat. He's guarding the jolly boat. Oh, okay. Yeah. You you tell that jolly boat though. I'll tell the jolly boat <laughs> to look after him. All right, mast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, Prion. You yes. are the one leading the group. Please make a perception check. I could do a perception Wait. check. Ooh, twenty-four. 20, oh, really? <laughs> wow. I rolled an 18. Yeah, good rolls tonight. I rolled an actual one. You make before your that. way one, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six, seven, eight, Woo-hoo. nine, ten, eleven. Holy hell. Twelve, <laughs> thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, <laughs> 19, 20. And with that one roll, you have bypassed wow. along the pirate's path the entirety of the Skull Dunes. Congratulations. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Sorry for ruining your plans. <laughs> no, this is, this is how it's literally supposed to go. Uh, so... Um, <laughs> it's amazing stay on the path and you do and nothing assails you on your way up you can feel it almost feels like the bones to the edge are just rattling vibrating shifting in the sands but as you do not step on them on your way up you do not disturb anything lying beneath and it is not long until you start to make your way towards um uh, and by by the way this is you guys did put in in daytime correct this is you yeah. you're thinking daytime versus okay daytime. Uh, daytime. could someone please roll a percentile die please who's on it i could do it with my quacken Oh, David did it. Did it. it. David did 94. it. We find 94. 94. 94 undead That's... trolls. <laughs> yeah, we've dealt with a troll before. Work real quick. Walked no. in the 94. 94. Okay. They walked in the other Very good. Um, so you are walking up through these this brush. It's the path to the monastery or the abbey now is obvious as you see it looming smoking in the distance and then you hear at one point the rustling of a bush and a half elf steps out of the brush he has um he is uh clothed in studded leather armor he has a short bow at the ready and he steps out and says that's quite far enough careful now I have 20 arrows 
trained on your position, each of them coated with the ichor, the venom, all sorts of foul things Umberly herself has dragged up from the depth in order to bring them down back as a prize. So, is he bullshitting? What are you doing here? Someone insight check that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what, is he telling the truth? Yeah, I don't believe him for a second. I personally have no idea. I rolled a three. <laughs> I rolled a Kraken again, the second one tonight. 26. <laughs> wow. I have a 16. Oh, nice. To I lose. got a 25. Not even going to roll. Loaded dice. I wanted to participate. <laughs> uh, I rolled a one earlier. Give me a break. Um, the only one who, who um, mentions anything is Prion, who is senses that... Uh, this guy might be stretching the truth a bit. Wait, I don't sense anything with my 25? Oh, 25. I'm sorry. I missed that. Uh, yeah, you need 26. Uh, I was going to say, holy uh, 25, yeah. Also, Talise, yeah. Uh, something not quite right about the description he's just given. A little too bold, a little too confident. So how many really are there of you? I just told you. Really? No. Doesn't sound like he believes you. But for what it's worth, we are not maraudering pirates, so we're not here to burn your shit. Uh, it, sound, it seemed like you had a little bit of a kerfluffle recently. Sorry for your loss. Um... We had some information that we kind of wanted to check out the area. Uh, so. Are Sorry? those sails? Is that your ship? That one over there? Yeah, that's me. That's us. And you know your way through the the dunes? It was, yeah. It was a really easy eye. Well. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Um, my name's Bayleaf, and we've had some interesting problems of late. I um, was in charge of security here and saw your ship and thought to investigate, and here you are, and sure enough, you're not more marauders. You are, well, maybe my ticket out of here. Perhaps. A boat is a boon, certainly. Uh, How can I pay for my passage? <laughs> uh, give us leave to look around the place. You have my leave, absolutely. How about the Ever leave? Ever heard of a man named Ilgar? No. Has he? Oh. <laughs> you gonna roll another natural twenty insight check? I was like, be funny if I did. No, I rolled a three. Oh, Jade, I'll help out. you. <laughs> checks out. You're real hot and cold tonight, Jade. Real hot and cold. Delise <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, is I just, just rolled, hot though. Yeah, I was. Delise is all hot, no cold. Oh, that's I'm just amazing. Super insightful tonight. Yeah. Only tonight. Uh, he seems <laughs> to be telling the truth. No recollection of who that might be. Hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. You have my leave. Um, I, that there are the others, of course, but um, well, how about you uh, join us when we walk back over there and tell them that uh, shit's not an issue. Would head rather not. Head of security mm. said it was all right. Ah, uh, you see, that's. I feel like that's going to get me killed potentially, or at least just be real nasty. Look. Who's currently can, in charge so, here. so you're not the head of security? If you're the head of security, oh no no no, no, no. that's what I that's what right? I do. I'm I'm I lead all the mercenaries here. But um, you see, it's been some days since they burned that place down and hiding out in the dank cellar, eating old salted pork and you know, dry fruit is kind of it's it's wearing on me a bit. I want to get out. I'm I'm ready for something new. Why are you hiding? I've got plenty of gold and, um, you know. Well, you're not going to take the gold off me, are you, or anything like that? You're not going to just rob me blind? Not right yeah. now. 
Why do we call it? We, we don't it rob being people, but we, but we, well, yeah, we do ask for payment for passage. Oh, I. Oh, so I can just pay you and go. That'd be great. What's your fee? How much gold do you have? <laughs> I. Okay. I, can I can I ask? An I have fifty question? gold. Drow. I have fifty gold. The fee's a hundred. Fifty gold. <laughs> great. Can we shake on it? Your associate just offered a hundred gold for safe passage. I'm and not the captain. Well, he's obviously lying. Obvi. How many now, what people kind of deals are, are actually up Come there? On. Sorry, sorry. What? How many people are actually up there? Because twenty was bullshit. Okay, now we're negotiating, right? No, now sure. we're just talking and having a chit chat. Come on. What's the benefit? Are you going to take me with you? What's going to go on here? Well, so the only way that you're getting out of here is if we live. So it's probably in your best interest that you help us survive. And then we'll take you with us. Because I don't really have a problem bringing other people onto my ship so long as they can follow orders and they're not going to knife us in the back. I don't... Uh, look, hmm. I organized this crew, but they don't really mean much to me. Uh, to be honest, I'm happy to go. Just me. You do what you want. I'm buying my own passage. I've put in my time, right? So... Hmm. Don't worry about anyone stabbing you in the back. It's just going to be me. Not stabbing you in the back, that is. That makes me hmm. feel so much better. Okay, I still come back around to the idea that you are not getting onto my ship without orders from us, which requires us to still be us, i.e. alive. Oh, that's fine. Right, yeah. yes. I'll so, wait for you if you can. If I, I just need to get back to the dunes, and I'll, I'll go back to the... Get far away as I can from here and um, wait for you. That'd be fine. Do you have anything else that you can tell us that would be helpful in getting us through the aforementioned burnt building with people who may or may not be friendly, getting through that alive? They are desperate. They are, I believe, I have three of my crew down there, seasoned fighters at the moment. There is, there are two or three other members of the cult still alive oh, and cult, one cult. of their fanatics as well giant dragonborn with shield and spear immensely good fighter he's incredible better than any of my people way better than me but you know one is never enough so hence where i stepped in that's the start how are we doing here am i looking better in your eyes i'm pretty good um just one thing cult just I want to make sure I wrap my head around that. They worship Umberly and, you know, do their thing. It's been strange lately, though, that things got a little different with the leader. Things, they were acting a little strangely. And, well, he's gone now. He got crushed as the, some of the tunnels mm -hmm. collapsed beneath. But uh, Asswords. here's the point where I'm going to need your guarantee. Uh, one, one, one last question. Uh, did they recently come into possession of any um, artifacts? Any anything special? Magic, Ma magical, maybe. I don't know about Power. recently, but there's a apparently something called the Winding Way beneath the basement of the Abbey. Um, only the top of the top of this. Uh, you know, Church of Umberly have ever gone that deep and seen it, and even less of them as of recent. The leader seems to have been constructing something special down there. Hmm. We had to haul a bunch of stuff down to the basement of the abbey and then just leave it there. No one look and go up and don't have any idea what they do with it. So that's about the extent yeah. of what I know. Well, I feel pretty all right with uh, booking this guy some passage. Uh, I don't have any objections in this weird democracy where I'm still a captain. No. I hope 
my fee was it worth was worth at least some counter for the coin. Uh, it's it's I don't really give a fuck. Um, great, I'm yeah, glad just, to hear. Just, and he winks just at wait Inaris. here. Just just <laughs> wait for us. Um, there is a guy who's guarding our boat. I don't recommend approaching him because if he doesn't know who you are, liable to come to a fight. Don't really want to see anyone else stabbing each other today unless it's us stabbing monsters that have no right to see the sun. So, you know. See one of those damned pirates. Uh, He's one member of our crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a shame. I could have asked you to dodge that arrow before it came, but well, you're the captain, I guess. I'm I've grateful no to have passage. Any secret shortcuts or passwords? Traps? Um, the, uh, yes. If they don't recognize you, if you don't have, well, I don't have a key, but um, knock on the trap door. If someone calls out, say, down among the dead men, let them lie. They certainly won't believe you're part of the cult, I wouldn't imagine, but at least they'll open the door. Sounds good. Oh, why don't we just send them down to the boat? And if one of them dies, if one of them dies, it'll probably be not be this guy because this guy's armed. At least we'll have a, a, wow. one less pirate. Ah. The chain of command is important. Let me know how you feel about that, and I'll but that's up to do as you wish, Captain. It's probably best that you just stay here. Let's not let things get messy while we're off dealing whatever the fuck's in there. Right. Well, as I said, they're a bit desperate, a bit ragged, so mm. good luck. Thanks. To the Abbey! To the Abbey! Yeah. <laughs> and the Abbey is very much what it looks like on this um, page. It is mostly collapsed. Um, heaps of burning embers and scorched stone in piles around. You can see where bits uh, had been attempted to be salvaged. And then sort of in the corner up near where you assume the altar was, there is a hatch leading straight down into the ground. Cinder Abbey. Down, down, down the hatch we go. Knocking first. Down is the it hatch. open? Bye, or bye, is bye. Isn't, isn't that the trap door that we have to have knock to say, on? That would be the one. Oh, I... Uh... Yeah, let's Down uh, among the dead men, let them lay. Open the fuck up. We're going to kill you all. Knockity knock, 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 knock. Okay. <laughs> exactly like that. Exactly like that. <laughs> As you're yeah. prepping to knock, um, uh, Melvin is going to cast mage armor and be covered in paper mache again. I love what you Nether is going to cast armor of Agathus. Paper mache. <laughs> right, and you hear a... <sighs> No, I swept off the fucking table. You go get the goddamn door this time. Yeah. All right. Well, the deal was, was sweet. What I know what the deal was. Get the fucking door, you rat. Uh, and you hear this sort of arguing going back and forth, and then you hear a voice call up. Who is it? What was that guy's name? Down among the dead men, let them lay. Bailey. I guess that's close enough. Bailey. Um, like, let them lie. Let them. <laughs> that's fine. Down yeah, among uh, the dead men, let them <laughs> lie. lie. But that's let fine. <laughs> I really wanted to say. Heavily you're wrong. accented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Power and, uh, among the dead man, let them die. <laughs> Down Just among like the too. dead men, let them lie. Uh, <laughs> uh, very good. And you are brought over to a space where the um, the hatch flips up, and you see this uh, young man in a hooded black robe looking up to you. Then. The stairs descend downward into a dimly lit space. Who are you? Wait a second. Augmund! Augmund! <laughs> what is it then? And you see this large dragonborn then saunter forward to look up the stairs. What's this then? Oh, we ain't pirates. But, and I'm totally standing behind Prion, by the way, and kind of just like looking <laughs> over his shoulder. Um, <laughs> not looking to start a fight. Just kind of wanted to look around. No one needs to do any m killing today. When you see ah. this guy slowly backing away down the stairs as the dragonborn starts to ascend. Like the head of security told us to come here? He's the one that gave us the code and told us to knock on the door? He also mentioned you, and he said that you were a really gifted fighter. <sighs> Damn traitor. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You're not part of his... Entourage, are you? Yep. We, we entourage on our own. No. Not reinforcements, damn it. Well, then y'all best scurry on somewhere else. Uh, mm, sorry. We got business downstairs. You hear another voice. Augmund, who's at the door? Some... Stupid wanderers or something. Don't know. And uh, nice. you get them out then. Uh, you heard them. Mm. Not welcome down here. Mm. Comes to blows then, guys. Gonna look around at everyone. This is the way we have to go, right? <sighs> Seems yeah. to be. Aye, aye. What? What do you mean oh. you have to go? Get out of this. this is our home. We don't okay, want to we... do anything about your home. Your home. <laughs> We're trying to figure out why people here, the worshippers of Umberly, why they suddenly taken in with the Sahuagan. Why y'all tracking with fish people? Oh, shit, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I know, it's like, why are there more of them on the map? You hear more and more footsteps. You hear doors like repeatedly like opening. Well, shit. Roll for initiative. I have no idea what you're talking about. Comes the voice of this. Ah! Jesus, is huge. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'll ask you one more time. <sighs> State your business or leave. Well, we, Clearly we you can see the state, state we're in. You want to wander around our home? Well, permission denied. We specifically want to go down into your basement to find an artifact that's controlling a bunch of fish people and making them attack towns on shore. <sighs> Sounds like something she would love. Right? So we know oh. it's in the basement here. Uh, okay. So you like all of that. Totally yeah. Can, can you just fucking kill them? That's now? that's that's very that's very umberly. It's very umberly. <sighs> Melvin, could you do fireball yet? It's about probably about <laughs> time now. No, Look out! No, not yet. Huh. They've got a caster and um oh, well, I wouldn't I call it. I thought they gonna go for him. Without, <laughs> as the um, <laughs> negotiations have not come 
to anything besides let me look in your basement, I think we will actually <laughs> <laughs> we will roll some initiative for the for for this hey, uh, first. Got anything worth stealing? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hurt anybody. We just want to take all your stuff. That okay? I just want to look in your sketchy basement. God. <laughs> what you got hiding in your sketchy basement? That's Damn! Funny. Damn, Daniel. Uh, I can't see where I put my um. Uh, token. You pissed. DM. Oh, so you're blind like your character now. <laughs> no, well, I, I do need to click on her in order. Okay, okay. Um, her, I, I will reveal, obviously, <laughs> you will know there's a room back here, but for those like of you burn. in the very back, feel free to put yourselves right there. You got it. Thank you. Nay, nay. You got to be in the, in the stairs. There are two people outside of the stairs. Okay, who's rolling initiative with... <laughs> with, with, um... Who's rolling two initiative? That's the sentence I'm trying to say. Uh, I, I've got my thing set for always roll at advantage, but I'll just go with the first number, which was 16. That's the word I was trying to find, advantage. <laughs> my brain has given up for the night. Big Saran. All right. Big Saran. Saran. Chalky. Uh, sorry, I'm just pulling up. Ooh, two more stat blocks here. I'll oh, be good to go. And I love that Melvin's just smooshed on the map. <laughs> oh no! I wasn't sure where to put myself because oh, yeah. Anaris put herself on top of me. Well, so. how about we just scoot scoot our line down a little bit? Brian, scooch forward. Is, That's that fine. Was a total accident. Total accident. There, you got room now. Obviously. <laughs> All right, Mariah, you are the first up as this begins to get a little violent. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Anaris is not on the turn tracker, just so you know. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your roll, Anaris? 14. 14? Um, I would like to lock eyes with the Dragonborn fellow over Prion's shoulder and whistle a horrid little tune into his mind. Uh-oh. Uh, please roll me a wisdom saving throw. Mm. I have an 18. Damn. Okay, so he takes half damage. Uh, so that's seven points of psychic damage, and he doesn't have to run away. Um, I will um, then tap Prion on the shoulder and say, kick this motherfucker's ass, all right? And give yourself a bardic inspiration. I go. That's me. Melvin. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out and um, summon forth a whip of ink and I'm gonna whip it down the stairs whip at the it. dragon board. Dragonborn, rather, um, as I cast Tasha's Mind Whip. Um, oh, I need an intelligence saving throw, DC 15. Um, sounds good. And is that at the uh, the big Dragonborn as well? Correct. That is. Oof. I do have a 15. Yeah, meets beats. Um, so it takes half damage. Um, that'll be seven points of psychic damage and um, no additional effects. Okay. Uh, how many points? Seven, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes, seven. All right. And is Tasha's is... That is a leveled spell. Okay, yeah. It is a second level, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't like that cool. question, though. <laughs> That'll be my turn. Oh, shit. Um, unfortunately, as we um, come around here, um, sorry, uh, Liz, I know you said you're not feeling very well. Um, one of the things, both Liz and I have moved 
uh, me not very far, but a big move. And Liz has moved very, very far across the country in the last week. So uh, we are all a bit recovering from stuff. So we need to say goodbye to Liz a little early tonight, unfortunately. But um, Liz, Liz, we love come you. On, Liz. Feel better. <laughs> we'll see you later. And it is the gladiator Ogman's turn. Yeah. We'll turn and make a couple of attacks. First one will be at Prion at a 20. Hits. For... Um, he is wielding it in one hand, so he deals nine points of piercing damage and then kind of... Uh, um, smiles and then will reach his shield back and try to bash you across the face with it. 16 though doesn't hit, does it? This is yeah. Gotcha. Um in which case he will then um turn his uh gaze towards Talise and will look and say, "What about you? Can you stay on your feet?" And, oh, shield bash with 12, I believe, also misses. I will take my reaction <laughs> and hit him. Ooh, cool. Yeah. That's a 17 on a dice. That's going to hit. That's going to hit, yes, regardless. Uh, on here, be easier. Um, I've already clicked it, but... Whoa! Really, okay. is that it? Four damage. Wow. Well, ah, you rolled the one on the. <laughs> Still, that's that's free damage and a reaction, which is pretty good. So, yeah. reach out and strike him with the glaive there. Pretty good. <laughs> Not good enough. And it will be Nether's turn. All right, Nether is going to touch the gilded flower that is tucked into the net that she wears as a shawl. And she says, Tuatha te Luanda Tuatha. And a uh, large, uh, shimmering, furry creature with buck teeth and a long, flat tail and wings appears right in front of the man right here as she summons a fae swamp beaver. Swamp beaver! Swamp beaver! <laughs> yeah! He comes and goes, Swamp beaver! As he is a fuming fae. Um, and his name is hmm, Swampy. Just a second, that's Swampy. <laughs> no. Swampy. It's not Swampy. His Mender name Beaver. is um, Godrazel, and uh, he's going Oof. to make an attack at advantage. Do you have a token ready for him, or I don't? I, you would have needed to do the tokens. I just it's we can you just do one thing when I can only summon the one fay. Okay. Um, so I, I just determine whether or not it's mirthful, fuming, or tricksy. Sure. Um, so uh, we can do three separate ones as a if it's fun. Place oh, that will be fine too. But uh, I know this is Doll's token, but we'll just use that That's for fine. the time being. That'll work. We're, I'm also going to be using Dahl, so... That's fine. Okay. Oh, okay. As in combat. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and Gadrazel appears right there and attacks. Only gets one attack this round. Um, using a short sword. And I, for some reason... I'm not seeing a token to click on for an attack, so I'm just going to do a, a roll a d20. Well, that's going to be in a miss. Oh, but it's at an advantage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Two threes. Wow. So oh. Gadrodel does not uh, succeed. i uh, standing right in front of the man here at attacking. And then Dahl is going to fly to this corner invisibly and fire his arrow at this man there on my bonus action. Is that this Dahl I flying do. there? Yes. Invisibly? Okay. Invisibly. And, and then stays of course, invisible from no, he does, after the attack? No, he does okay. not stay invisible after the attack. Uh, so hitting AC 17. 
Actually, uh, that's not right. is 17 me, plus sorry. 6. Is meat to beat. All right, well, actually, from invisibility, I guess it would be 23. Yeah. So, hits uh, even more. Hits even more. So it's one point of piercing damage, and I need a constitution saving throw. Okay, con save. Uh, I've got a six. All right, so it is poisoned uh, for one minute. Okay. Did you have the swamp beaver attack the dragon or the white background fellow? The white background fellow. Okay. No The guy that was huge. And that is Nether's turn. Okay. And is it positioned in the right way or was it here? Right there. Right there. Gotcha. All right, it's their turn now. The one, ugh. Mm. Ugh, I don't feel, ugh, kind of turns around having been pierced by this and will turn around and attack its attacker. Um, two long sword attacks at disadvantage. Uh, I've got a 10 to hit. No. And a 18 to hit. <laughs> disadvantage, that's a hit. Alrighty. Damn it, four. <laughs> um, four points of... Sl uh, well, no, he's got no shield, so 13 points of slashing. Doll goes away. <sighs> and then he starts to stagger towards here to help his friend in the, um, in the battle. Attacking the summoned creature with a long sword attacking two-handed. I have a 22 and an 11 to hit. The 22 will hit. Alrighty. Uh, eight points of slashing damage as he strikes two-handed. Yeah. Um, and you see one more run in. What? What's going on? Drawing a long sword and a short sword. Inerith's. I unmute. Alright, which one am I getting? I want... There's a giant dice on top of me. Alright, I'm going to attack the dragonborn. So I will attack him with my short bow. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Come on, please. Nice. The 19 to hit. Does that hit? Uh, yeah, absolutely hits. Yes. Roll sneak attack. And then... Wha-bam! Does that give me a... <laughs> Wha-bam! Wha-bam! Woo-hoo! <laughs> 11 points of damage with my... Uh, total 19. of 19? 19 total. 19 uh, total? This is on oh. the, the dragonborn up front, did I say, yeah? yeah. Yes. It is 19. Okay. Oh, uh, he takes the arrow, which begins to pierce through his um, the armor that he's wearing. And, uh, he looks at you, gritting his teeth in frustration. Anything else, Anaris? That is it. All righty then. Um, let's see. It is now Talisa's turn. Can't unmute. I would like to cast Shatter. What? I, I know. I know. I'm pulling out all the fun stuff. So, cha -cha -cha -cha, within a 10 foot radius sphere of my choice. Show to others. So, you cannot see completely over to here because this is complete that you can't see over the ledges here and the stairway is completely Ooh, enclosed on its way down i thought that was a banister Shoot. you can move if you want to move all the way into the fray here okay then i shall move myself into the space Right there. That would be an attack of opportunity from the dragon born, just FYI. Oh, sugar tit. And You're possibly right. someone else, so. Well, this is the size of your template, so just let me know where you want to move it. 
stay here that I don't get that attack of opportunity. Because I'm still there. So I would like to move it centered, I think, right here. Beep bop. Ah, yeah. Jesus. Swamp fever. <laughs> With a short sword. All right. Aya. Attacking the guy on your, uh, the gladiator or the guy on your left or right? Or your near left or further left? I don't no, know. No. What I'm this is where I would like it to be centered. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, those three then. The air rings out in a shatter. It's a con save, yes? Yeah. All right, all three it need to make a constitution save. saving throw. Yes. Wow. I have a 20, a 16, and a 20. I hate them. I know. They still take rolled damage. really nicely, though. I did. I rolled the 21. I just hate them. I know. They still take 10. So do they, I was going to say, do they take 10 or 11? All of I them take 10 damage. Ten. Okay. As their ah, ears are ringing from this, um, this explosion of noise and um, whatnot. All right. It's a tiny space. <laughs> Anything else from Talise? No. Oh, okay. This little one right here looks out. Um, cannot do much. Um, uh, looks towards you, though, as you have charged forward. Still ducking behind this table. Talise, please make a dexterity saving throw. A dex save. Versus a sacred flame. <laughs> Oops. Uh, you are so quick enough to dodge out of the way with a 15. Easily. <laughs> Take that bullshit away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Umberly's flames do not burn you. All right. <laughs> Prion. I, uh, Eolax swoops down and I attack the dragonborn. Uh, with two <gasps> natural ones. Wow. Oh my God. You rolled like three natural 20s this session. <laughs> And I guess it comes back at this point. Wow. That's uh, rough. A second Double attack. natural one. <laughs> yeah. That's second rough, attack. Buddy. 24. What? Oh, yeah. That'll do it. That's better. 11 damage. Nice. Ah, you slice through that armor as he uh, recoils a bit. Just grits his dragon teeth and looks all the more... Um, and I action surge. Close to Hey, nice. You have a bardic inspiration. I Excellent. use that for this then. Is that a D8 now, isn't it? Uh, is it? I don't know. Uh, is this the one you got from Oh, it is a D8. Yeah, no, it's yeah. from me. Yeah, Nin it is a D8. 19 now. to hit. When did... Wait, when did you inspire him? Uh, at the end, on of, your the, at the end of my at last turn. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I just didn't hear it. That's great. Okay, cool. Yeah. 19, nothing uh, you can do about that. 10 off. Awesome. And my second attack. It's starting to look bloody. Another 8 off. <laughs> wow. Nice. Just dun, 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 dun. pumping out the damage. Ugh, it takes one hit after another, and I was looking. <sighs> and just grits his teeth and continues. Um, anything else for Prion? Uh, that's me done. All right. Oops, it's not going to get next to Swamp Beaver. It is going to look <laughs> up the stairs towards Prion and um, look at you and reach out his hand. Um, hearing the, well, Prion or Sarayan or uh, Talise. No, you're right. I'll do it from here. Talise, please right. make a wisdom... <laughs> I believe saving throw. Oh, I will gladly make a wisdom saving throw. I got a fifteen. Oh, oh no, that's no, no, a no. shame. You take that back. You take that there, back. There, you begin to feel very cold, almost paralyzed by his spell, but you shake off the effects. You want to shake it off? He goes back here. Shake it off. Aha. Shake it off. All right. There is a man wearing armor and a, has a large golden medallion around his neck and Ooh. he moves forward and um, begins to 
cast a spell. Um, when he does, suddenly you see an enormous amount of fish, crabs, nautilus, and then what look to be undead sailors begin swarming around him in a um, a uh, fifth. Uh, from 15 uh, feet out of him. I'd like so, to counterspell that. What's that? Mm. I said I'd like to counterspell. So, when uh -oh. we got to the part about the description of the spell, when I said yeah. he begins casting a spell, is kind of the okay. time to chime in with it. Um, that's so, fine. I'm sorry if, if this, that's works. kind of the way I tend to do it. Yeah. I begins casting a spell, dot, dot, dot. So, yeah. I was wondering why you paused. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly why. It, it wasn't quite Damn. clear to me, so thank you for the yeah. clarification, and I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and we'll move to this place right here. Um, so you, that's a 15-foot radius around him, correct? Yes. Okay. That's correct. The Raya! Guardians. <laughs> please, um, actually, let's see. Spirit I Guardians. Would be I haven't used that in a bit. No? So okay. please make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Woof. Okay. Not my best. Uh, let's see here. 15. Oh, 15. Not bad. Um, what is my say? If you succeed. Thank God. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh... That so it takes fell. seven points of necrotic damage. Oh, okay. Woof. Uh, damage. Hmm. I don't like that he's just standing right there. That's annoying. Uh, well, I guess I will attempt my same thing again um, on uh, Durgan Boy. So please roll me a wisdom save. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. It was the 15. So he succeeds? Sorry. Okay. That's yeah. okay. So he takes six points of psychic damage. That's all right. Uh, I'm just going to scooch, scooch, you, scooch you a little bit up uh, here in front of uh, Debris. And uh, okay. that's... Uh, I think that's my turn. Yeah. Melvin. I'm muted. That's fine. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Let's see here. I will... Oh, what will I do here? I will... Um... dip my fingers into the pouch of dust that um, was gifted to me earlier um, cool. and expend a it's, charge. It's on D&D &D Beyond, by the way. So name oh, the is. same Great. thing, just so you know. I added it there. Perfect. So. Um, I will grab that after this combat, or after my turn, at least. And um, I will be casting... Melvin's minute meteors as small burning globules of ink appear around my head, floating. Okay. Um, right and I will be <laughs> letting loose on um, um, I want to be hitting these two without hitting our water genasi friend, if that's possible. I pick a point and everything in five feet, so if I can pick the corner here, I think I hit both of them. Yeah, that checks out. Cool. Um, and I will choose to deal that extra force damage to the uh, the Dragonborn. Okay. Uh, all right. Dex saves? So, yes. Uh, dex saves, DC 15. Okay. Dragonborn has a nine, so he's going to miss. And um, Ozymandias is going to roll a 11. They both fail. 
All right, so seven points of fire damage to each of them, and then an additional... Um, right here, it's 2d6 for the Dragonborn. Well, that was only one. That's fine, dude. Roll 20. It's, it's cool. Ooh. Um, nine more points of force damage to the Dragonborn. Awesome use of that. Nine extra damage. That's huge. Yeah. As you can see, um, bits of his armor actually just start to disintegrate away, as if just crumbling into dust in front of him. Oh. Very cool. Anything else from Elvin? Uh, I'm just going to hunker down and make sure that Naneris has a clean shot above me. Does uh, Mr. Um, Man have to make a constitution save? He throw? does indeed. Got 17. He's good. And uh, let's see. Mr. Gladiator Mr. Anderson. Uh, is going to try start off by trying to shield bash you, Prion, with a 25. Hits. Please make a strength saving throw. Strength saving. After taking 10 points of damage. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration here. Uh, I don't know why it didn't do it, but i roll again. A 16. Okay, cool. I believe, aren't you proficient in strength saving throws? Just make sure you click on your oh, saving, saving throw, throw and not a strength Sorry. check. So you res uh, you succeed regardless. You still take ten points of slashing damage. Um, the first one, okay, yeah, doesn't matter. Ten yeah, points. he's gonna do it again with eighteen to hit. Misses. Oh wow! All right, and then hit you with a spear for a fourteen is gonna miss too, and he looks less confident. And I thought you Nether. were the best. Nether. Damn. She's blind again. She listens to the uh, grunts from the dragonborn. She holds out her hand, cocks her head, and sends out a blast of power as she casts. Is it ultimate? Good old Eldritch Blast. I'm going to use my um, inspiration on this, so it's just a normal roll. So I'm hitting AC 12. Unfortunately, will not hit. Him. All right, so second dodge one, out of the way. Second one coming at him. This one at disadvantage. This time I'm hitting AC twenty-one. Ooh, yep. Ooh. And the damage is four points of force damage. Okay. Blast him in the chest. Even taking even more damage since Melvin has disintegrated part of his armor away with the liar's dust. And as I. Um, as I send out that second one, I call out to Gadragel, Gadragel, and I say, The caster, attack the caster! And he comes down with his um, short sword. He actually technically goes on the turn after me. Okay. I don't know if you want to... Uh, so it's a separate turn now? It, yep. It's always, yeah, once he's summoned, then it's always a separate turn. Okay. It and makes... it's a bonus action to command him, right? And he just continues no, doing... I don't think it oh. is, actually. Um, just double check. I just have to. I have to verbally command him. If I do not, okay. then he just takes the um, takes dodge the action. Dodge action. So again, he is fuming. So at advantage, <laughs> hitting AC. So yeah, pretty sure even with his bonuses, that's gonna miss. But at advantage. Man, unfortunate rolling. Yeah. Um, so let me let me just double check here. He's hitting actions. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So it's only going to be a plus one on that hit. So. Oh really? Unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so nine. I'm assuming. So he, he uses his spell, your spell attack modifier to hit, right? Oh, he does. Well, in that it's case, a, is this Fae Spirit spell? Yes. In that oh, case, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, to hit is to your hit. spell attack modifier to hit. Oh, not so fifteen. 
Yeah. Hits. Oh, 15 hits. Hey, now we're talking. Also, it, it does have to take the... Um, uh, the make a wisdom save as it starts, though, for the, uh, uh, versus right. the... wisdom save. Uh, Boop. So, I think that's going to be just that's just it, right? Um, so you can pull up the summon fey stat block, and I've it got should it. have. Yeah. Wisdom is I've plus zero. I've got all zero. the stats, so Correct. I've got plus zero to wisdom. So, so 14. take five points of necrotic damage. Five points of necrotic damage. And then the attack is... Um, oh man, I wish it didn't go away every time I roll it. I apologize. Six, so five points. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. So eight points of piercing damage and... Ooh. Three points of force damage. Ooh, what's the force damage from? The con save. That's just what his short sword does. It's doing. Oh, cool! Uh, force, uh, piercing, and uh, force damage. Very and cool. A, and a con save. So my eleven total. Eleven total. Save. Eleven. Good enough. Good enough. Veterans turns. All right. So we are going to, uh, one is going to attack Talise twice. Rude. Two-handed longsword attacks. I have a crit and a 22. Yikes. 16 points of damage followed by eight points of damage. Oh, one is going, okay. one is going to attack the beaver, uh, with a six and an eight. Both miss. Uh, so This one, this one is at disadvantage. It's Poison. 17 and a seven. So the um, 17 hits. Five I'm, points of I'm, slashing damage. I'm pretty sure both of those guys have to make deck saving throws because I have a Wrath of the Storm reaction where if they hit me with damage, they can potentially take up to 2d8. That's you have to use that reaction. So that's that's your cue to um, use it. So yeah, when he hits you, if you would it. like to use your action, you can do it. Yeah, I never have, so I'm excited. I would. Yep. Like and you to. only get one I'm reaction per hit. round, so you can use it. Okay. So what happens now? He has to make a save. Um, yeah. Let me put that up in. So it's Wrath of the Storm. There's the right window. Uh, when a creature within five Dexterity. feet hits me, dex save. He has to beat a 14. Uh, he's got a 19, so go ahead and Rude. roll the damage. He'll take half. <laughs> take so four points of damage as you turn around and thunderously rebuke him. How dare you? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> In Eris. Turn this dragonborn into a pin cushion. Boop, boop, boop. I'm going for my short bow again, and please. Oh, 10? Unfortunately, 10 is not going to be enough. It will um, clink off of the wall as he ducks out of the way. Um, well, <clears throat> does anybody need healing word with my bonus action? Mm -hmm. um, my... Yeah. Okay. I was going to say there are a couple. Uh, who looks the worst? Who looks like they're like bleeding out and really, really, really need some help? I've lost 19 so far. Okay, so Prion, like Prion. you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get some words and uh, drought. You probably don't want to know what they say, but you got healing coming your way. Five points. Thank you all. Healing coming your way. I got you. I got you. You owe me one, Prion. All right. Any movement from Anaris? Uh, hell no. I'm staying out of the way. <laughs> okay, am, then I it, have paid you back by standing in the front. <laughs> then it is Talisa's turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Please I make a to. wisdom saving throw. 
to start your turn. You take 12 points of necrotic damage and your speed is halved. Owie. It's very friendly. Mm. Mm -hmm. That changes my entire plan. Curses. Okay. Shoot. Damn it. I guess I will. Well, that changes my entire plan. How dare you, DM? <laughs> Can I cure wounds myself? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that is what I'm gonna do. Owie. Four, Second level points. cure wounds. Yeah. 11 points. Very good. Yep, yep, yep. That's all I can do, because if I move, I get attack of opportunity. So. Okay. Just gonna stay there and hide behind my shield. Alright. This guy is going to. One, two, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I know it. The move was weird, but it works for the squares. Going to actually this time look back to you, Prion. The cleric was too hard. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh. Wisdom saving throw, eh? Where is it? Is it a charm effect? Well, natural 20 anyway. <laughs> you are not held by... Why creature. are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Very good. All right. Um. Oops, I did a. I did a. Oops, I did the wrong creature. So we will do that creature's turn on the next one. Prion, your turn. I see the priest boy in front. I mentally tell Eolac to go and distract him. I whip off the net from around my uh, my belt and I throw it at him. At uh, Priest which boy. one? Priest boy. Priest. Okay, you still it is a ranged. It has a range of five feet. It's still a ranged attack though, so it is still at disadvantage. Yeah. So it the nullifies. Hook, hook net has a range range of ten to fifteen, not five, which is why I liked it so much. No, 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 but it's still a ranged though. attack, and you still have someone oh, threatening we've, within we've, five feet okay, of you. So it's just a normal, right? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. That would be a miss then. Unfortunately, he ducks underneath it, yes. Oh. It scatters to the ground. Okay, and then I will take my second attack at the drag. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to hit the priest with, with the trident. Due to frustration, 18 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits the priest. For nine points of slashing, uh, piercing Ooh. damage. <clears throat> All right. Oof. And a con save. Oh, please make a con save to start your turn retroactively. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. Eight points of necrotic damage. And my con save. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 13. I'm going to use a bonus action. It's a second wind because I am hurt. Okay. Wow. All right. So it's this guy's turn. So now it's this one's. Uh, same thing. Talise, please make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, can I move at all? Yes. I'll move to here. That is a failure. Take one point of radiant damage. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. good. All right. 
Um, looking around at your healing stuff. Hmm, how are we gonna do this? Um, he looks up. It's the priest's turn, and he looks up towards you, Mariah. No. <laughs> then begins to cast a spell. I uh, take a cast reaction. A I'll counter spell. What? I hit oh, him as well. I spelled that. Sorry, what about hitting him? I hit him. If he attacks someone else with him, he's within five feet of me. It's not necessarily it's an not, attack. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You I'm, do counter spell? Yeah. And he, he looks down and uh, grits his teeth that. and takes a disengage action and moves to I hit here. him. Ooh, you can attack even if they disengage. I can. He's got indeed. sentinel, yeah. Did he move 12 beyond your reach? Uh, Technically, yeah. no. I mean, he when, moved behind cover. You, oh, which you don't takes have a reach weapon? Of, I do have a reach weapon, yeah. What's the problem? I've, I believe he did not move more than five feet away, or more than 10 feet away. He, I've got a reach of 10, so. Didn't, didn't, yeah. move Wait, didn't he try to cast a spell? So how would he? How would he disengage? Bonus action spell. Oh, okay. Interesting. It doesn't matter. He uses a disengage. I've got sentinel, so. Okay, <clears throat> but I, my point is, he doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity because he does not exceed your weapon reach. So that's I can't. With, that's with, get him with around the, there. So surely, that would count. <laughs> I can't hit him through a wall. If he's moved, he's moved completely out of my reach, regardless. Okay. The wall um, the twelve's probably missed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. That's true. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I see the logic there, so uh, would go with that. But just f for wide open combats in yeah. the future, to provoke an oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to it has to exit your weapon's reach, and yeah. you have ten foot reach, so it it uh, it would not normally. Yeah. But oh, yeah, in this I case, I that's fine. I completely agree. Yeah, but this case, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm. All right, Mariah, please make a wisdom saving throw. Tits. Oop. Fuck. Oof. 14 points of necrotic damage. Ow. Ah, uh, shit. He's around the corner. He just halved. Yeah. That's incredibly unideal. Um, yeah, here's a question for you. If I move to here, and I would probably get attacked of opportunity, would I be able to see him? If you move to here? Mm, uh, one over. To here? Um, yeah, the back corner gets there. He would have cover versus a ranged attack, oh, but yes, do you I would have line of sight. Do you, I need your speed is halved, he said. Oh, also, you wouldn't okay. have the speed to go through Prion. Yeah. Okay, well, here's a question for you. Um, Dispel Magic doesn't say it requires visual. Uh, you can target so, the effect. You can clearly see yeah. the effect. Great, then I would like to target the effect with the Dispel Magic. Yes. Very good. Nice. <laughs> that is the effect of the Umberly's evil sea creatures flitting around you dissipates. Yay! Yay! Uh, good use of that. I'm just gonna hang tight. No, that's a lie. Um, Talise, you're really, really cool and I like your water hair and stuff. Go! No! Valco! I have some party destruction. Cool. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Melvin! Oh, my, my plans got disrupted because my plan was to try to disrupt the spellcaster, but that's okay. I'd much rather not have that effect going. Cool. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I will uh, point with my quill down the stairs. I have a clean shot and I'm going to uh, cast a Scorching Ray 
uh, I get three three rays of fire, um, and they will appear as little darts that look like quills, and then they will shoot forward. Um, I will hit this guy, this guy, and I think I can see this guy from yep. where I am. So I'll hit all three of them with a scorching array. You can uh, divvy up the targets if you want. Is it just purposeful that you do it at different ones? If you can have the same target if you want. Yeah, no, it's just, it's intentional. Okay. It's I'm intentional. Okay, it. Unfortunately, I, I don't think a nine is going to hit that dragonborn. Nope. Um, how about against the lady in the back? 14? L for the people in the back, uh, 13 yeah. hits. 14 hits. 13 hits. Okay. Too, so. That'll be uh, seven points of fire to her. Cool. And then this person here, I have a natural Ooh. 20. Roll that um, 4d6. Wow. 18 points of fire. Nice. Excellent Feels scorching good. ray. Uh, and then, um, as my bonus action, I will throw two more meteors. Um, the first, I will again target this corner to hit the dragonborn. Okay. And the second will hit this lady in the back. Um, so I need dexterity saving throws from each of them. Uh, 16 for the dragonborn, 7 for the one in the back. Uh, do you want me to roll twice or just once for damage? Um, please please roll for each one. Um, yeah, sure. So dragonborn will take 5 damage. The lady in the back will take 6. Fire. Okay. And uh, I'm going to hunker down again and make room for an heiress. No! 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 Hell bent on fighting you, Prion. Another shield bash comes in at a 14. It doesn't work, and. Uh, 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 your friend then. Shield bash at Talise for a 25. Please make a strength ah. saving throw after taking 8 points of damage. And then, can I reaction for that one? Do you have a set number of uses, have, or can you... Yeah, I have three. Okay, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, okay. Do it, do it, do it. I do, I do it. But it I believe you, what kind of save does he make, Dex? Do it! Dex, it's a Dex of a 14. I have a natural 20 for a 25. I, I hate them. Please roll the damage, You're rolling though. really you, well. You said I took, you said I took eight. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I rolled an eight. Cool. Uh, you rolled two D eight. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, three. You are knocked prone. Mm -hmm. Dragonborn oh, takes four damage, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. it does he is looking you. like on his last leg, and attacks you with advantage as you are prone. Ow. Twenty-two to hit. For. <sighs> Uh, yeah. Ow. What is it? Yeah, 11 points of piercing damage. <laughs> Nether. I will Nether. send two Eldritch Blasts at, well, I've done one at first, towards the Dragonborn. At disadvantage. <laughs> Um, so hitting AC 14. 14 is a miss versus Dragonborn. All right, second one. Oh. That hurts. 27. It's okay, Debris. And a one. And the one is going to be what goes with it because I'm blind. And then she says, stay after him. And um, Gadragel, um, disappears and appears next to Mr. Man. This guy over here. Mr. Man. Okay. And attacks. A train. At advantage, I believe. At advantage because he's fuming. Oh, so... Smoking hot beaver. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh um... <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I regret nothing. So it's a 20. 
Uh, that's going to hit regardless. Go ahead and roll okay, the damage. Right. Gotcha. Actually, to, to be honest, he has one hit point left. So, <laughs> well, all right. Faye Beaver mauls to death this uh, cleric, and you hear just like, and hot ah, Faye no! Beaver <laughs> around the corner of the stairs. Oh my toes. Oh my toes. Oh my God. You enjoyed that too much, sir. <laughs> That was so disturbing. Uh, I kind of thought perfect. it was cute. <laughs> I, yeah, I loved it. it. I loved it, but it was disturbing. All right. The That's leader it. is That's dead. Me. All right. Beavered to death. Hmm. They should all just take disadvantage because they're demoralized. They right? do look a little bit shaken, not knowing quite what to do. Um... But these guys, for now, begin to fight, having this uh, one here says, What then? Come on, keep going. And uh, two attacks versus Talise. Ah. He's on the floor, I believe. <laughs> uh, 15 and a 20. Uh, the 20 would hit. Seven points of damage. Aye. The other I one, I'll s I believe, have you taken your turn since your last reaction? You can no, only do it once. No, come okay. on, let's ignore that rule, it's fine. Yeah, I know. That means that for um, And then I have an 11 to hit, and then I have a, uh, at advantage, and then I have a, another critical, 12 points of damage. To, to me? Yes. Bye. As, Talise falls unconscious. Uh, yes! Huh? Keep pushing up the stairs! Drive them out! And then one steps forward with to attack Prion. Oops, not at an advantage. Uh, 17 and 12. Pope miss. All right. Inaris. Mute. I cannot hear you, my love. <laughs> I cannot hear you. Eh, just kidding. Oliver uh, Oliver muted me. Anyway, uh, I said something really, really funny and sarcastic and witty, but now I can't remember what it was, so I can't repeat it. I'm going to attack <laughs> with my <laughs> short bow. Why did oh. I roll short sword? Who are you attacking? Uh, my, my bro here. Um, yeah, please, so, Inaris, I, I know it's been a couple weeks, so let's keep that roll. But remember that you you have been standing in place for most of this time. You have a feature. Mm -hmm. If you stand in place, you can roll your attack with advantage. Very useful rogue feature, especially if you aren't moving. But you might so want to you use want... your bonus action for something else. On this it occasion. depends. It, if you want to, then yes. But I'll take I'll take care of it, please. Okay. <laughs> Healer down. If you feel like using your bonus action for that, go ahead and re-roll that one mm -hmm. to do a. Um, I'm gonna, roll I'm one gonna more. I'm gonna re-roll because uh, okay. uh yeah, that's a twenty-five. Nice. At advantage twenty-five hits, I assume. Did you say the dragonborn? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Fuck him up. Go ahead and roll the damage. 13, Turn him into kindling. Not an excellent damage roll, no offense. However, twelve hit <laughs> Don't points steal remaining. My Thirteen is enough as you put an arrow yes. through the side of his eye and he falls over down. Ah, now the acolytes are starting to look very panicked. Or not the acolytes. Now the um, sort of Gennaro guards here are starting to look pretty panicked. Uh, Talise, please make a death saving throw. Death saving throw. I have never had to do a death saving throw in D&D &D Beyond. Yeah. That's a success. Good job. Is, is it rolling? <laughs> cool, I didn't know it was rolling. Awesome, okay. So I marked that there, okay. You hear a door open and close very quickly. After that, and then Prion, it's your turn. I step over to Lisa's body and Eolat comes down. Um, I'll attack whichever one's the most injured first. This one on the this side. For a 25 to hit. 
Absolutely. For eight damage. Okay. He's still up. Yep, he is quite bloodied. I will hit him again. For a 16 to hit. That hits. For 11 damage. Oh my goodness. That, with that, you slice him across and he kind of catches and you see him trying to just sort of hold himself together but just slumps down to the ground. And that's me done. The uh, last yes. of the lead... Okay. My bonus action... The last... Um, my net that's laying on the floor summons back and lands on my belt. Oh, that's your magic weapon now that you have for I can have two. Then. Okay. So. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, this one looks at you one last time, uh, Prion, and says, You will breast below! And casts a spell to you. Please make a wisdom saving throw. Is it against a charm effect? No. God damn it. 12. Oh, you succeed. You are not Ooh. paralyzed. What are you saying? I see words coming out of your mouth, but I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Mariah. Um, I will send a few comforting healing notes on the wind for my dear friend Talise on the ground for eight healing points, healing, healing okay. bits as a bonus action. You see the veterans kind of react. What? What's going? No, no. My song's better than just... your song. Um... <laughs> Then I'm gonna shoot down the stairs with my crossbow at, uh, wait, where's, Pre oh, Prion's in the same spot as that guy. Okay. Yes. Okay, how, how unwell does this fellow look? These two both look pretty healthy. Okay, how about this one? Uh, damaged. Okay, I'm gonna pop down the stairs a little bit and I'm gonna shoot at him. Uh, with okay. my crossbow. 17. Does it? 10. Oh right in the shoulder. Amazing. Almost dead. Drops to a knee, but just hanging on. Your god sucks. <laughs> Aww. That's my turn. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Melvin. Uh, on my turn, I'm going to step down as well. And um, I'm gonna throw my uh, my new meteors first to see if this this one dies before I decide who to target with my other stuff. So I'm actually gonna hit. Um, I think I'm gonna hit both meteors into this spot so it hits this okay. guy and this one. Um, so I need dexterity Dex saves, saves from, from both both of them. Uh, as I. Ooh, that's a sad roll. Four and thirteen. All right. Well, um... well, the first one you will see um, just kind of actually takes off the leg of this tiefling <laughs> cult fanatic at the leg, and they ah, just fall over and then seem to hit their head hard on the tile floor, unmoving. Um, this guy also takes the full damage of uh, the first one, um, just but just braces himself against it and grimaces at the fire. Nice he'll, one, get a, he'll get a second save against the, the second meteor as well. Okay. Uh, um, 18. So he'll take five against that second okay. meteor. And then um, I will, as my action, uh, point my quill at him and uh, mime throwing a dart and shoot a firebolt at him. Uh, eight, four, 14 to hit. 14 does not hit. That's deflects right. off of his armor. And oh, then I'm going to take a step back. Cool. <laughs> Debris. Good job, kid. Um, you. Debris listens very carefully to everything that's happening down the steps and <laughs> sends another couple of uh, Eldritch Blasts flying down. Blast. It's going to be hitting AC 13. 13 um, will miss, unfortunately. Okay. And the second one. 
Um, so, at AC 11. Which also misses Ice You. Yes. Right. And so then she says, Keep at it! And the uh, Gadrigal <laughs> disappears and appears right in between these two and attacks the one that was just hit with the uh, fire, uh, the um, yeah. spells from Melvin. Other side, I think, Peter. Right here. You enjoy it too much. Too much, sir. So that is a 10. And still at advantage because of fuming. 12. Um, can I use a bardic inspiration on this? Not you get your spellcasting modifier. Sorry, that hit anyway, wouldn't it? Oh. Well, the first one would hit. Yeah, 17. Isn't Sorry. there a plus? You're a yeah. That's that a hits. Mm-hmm. So it's actually the highest one would be a 19 would hit. All right. Yeah. Um, and let's see. That does... So... What level did you cast it at? It's always cast at level 3, Warlock. Okay. Uh, so that's... So 1d6 plus 3 plus the spells level. So that's 6, 7... 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. And cool. the force damage is uh, a further 2 points of force damage. Cool. And the second attack? He only gets the one attack. Oh, rounded down. Gotcha. Rounded down. Okay. Anything else? Nope. At this <laughs> point, um, just sort of ripping into the guy's leg. Yeah. With only a couple of... Uh, the uh what seemed to be low level cultists remaining some of them fled but the leader's dead these two um armored gentlemen just throw down their weapons one just kind of throws his hands against this beaver <laughs> just trying to throw it off being like no they're dead please stop stop no no more and throw down their weapons and attempt to surrender another calms her beaver Inaris, do you accept the surrender on your turn? <laughs> Took me a minute to recover from that. From oh yeah. That. Oh yeah. yeah. I had, um, it didn't even occur to me that that was going to be a problem. <laughs> well, I want to look at Sean's beaver and I want to stroke it. No, 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 no. no. Uh, okay, okay, we're gonna roll that back. I don't wanna. Oh, we're gonna roll boy. that back. About Sean's beaver, thank you. Keep on, and I'm gonna oh, shoot no. Sean's beaver. Okay. Uh, um, but yes, Anaris, she will not want to, but if they throw down their weapons, I'm not wasting my arrows. Okay. Is anyone going to... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Elena's mom. <laughs> wow. Oh, Jesus. Okay. The, is anyone going to uh, slaughter instead of letting them surrender at I this point? Nah. I will let them live. Okay. I accept their cool. I accept their surrender, but you must bow down. I'm gonna beaver. maintain my concentration on the <laughs> final Dang. orb of flaming uh, ink that okay. I have surrounded my head, but I'm not gonna throw yeah. it at him yet. As we um, since we've got we're almost to uh, 10:30 at this point. This is where we will pick up next time with the group surrendering. As you have made your way into the fir th your foray into the first part of the tunnels below the abbey. So, a tough fight. Congratulations. That was very tough. We just want to let the audience know that no beavers were actually harmed during this fight.